Welcome to New Masterclass Tutorial. This time I'll be taking you through the process of building a real estate listing website using Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters, Jet Search, and Elemental Pro. Now, even though I'll be using a real estate business as the backdrop for this masterclass, the most important takeaway are the tools and the skills that I'll be covering. Once you've worked through the topics covered, you should be able to take those skills and apply them to pretty much any other type of listing website using WordPress and the tools we've covered. Now, before we get started though, there is an important point I do need to raise. This is not a beginner's tutorial. I will be assuming a certain level of prior knowledge. Now, if you're new to the world of dynamic websites using the tools I'll be covering today, you may want to go over my introduction tutorials to get more comfortable with the technology before diving into this particular masterclass tutorial. I'll drop links to those as well as a lot of other invaluable resources in the description below, so check those out. Okay, let's get started by taking a look at exactly what we'll be building in today's masterclass. So here's our key starting point. This is what you would expect in a typical kind of real estate website. However, techniques can be transferred to pretty much any kind of website. But what we're going to be covering today, first of all, let's work our way from the top down. First off, we have a full Ajax search. So we start searching for a apartment, for example, you can see we now get a really nice looking search. We can click and we can take a look at that particular property or we can skip through if we have longer lists. So we have a really nice looking filter at the top. Then we have all these options to subfilter any of our listings out. So for example, we can choose between the different types of properties. So we can say we're only interested in apartments and you can see that updates in real time. If we want to change that based upon a location, we can do that inside there as well. You can see we end up with just one property or we can step back out of that. Now these are dependent upon each other. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I choose condominium, you can see Dublin and London. If I choose an apartment, you can see Dublin and London inside there. However, if I choose a house, you can see the only option inside there is Cardiff. So these are taking a look at the information, the properties that are listed inside there. And then when we choose the property type, that will subfilter the property location. So I'll show you how to set all of that up. I know that's a really popular thing. We can also filter based upon prices. And as you can see, we've got a range of different prices. But if we say, well, 1.5 million is just a little bit too rich for our pocket right now. Let's just filter these to between 250 and 785. And you can see now we just get those in that particular range. So we have a lot of different options. These are stackable. So you could say you're interested in apartments in that price range and you can see that filters it down again. So really cool to see we have all these filters based upon various different criteria inside there. Now this particular section inside you is an injected advert for the particular listing your properties. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this particular video because I've already covered that in this same template setup. I'll link to that in the description below so you can check that out if you want to know how to do that. But we are going to take a look at how to build these listings. We're going to take a look at how to build this filter, the Ajax at the top for our search. We're also going to come in and take a look at a property. So let's just say we like this relaxing apartment. If we go in, you can see we now have all the info across the top, the name, it's a new build, the location. We can share this through various different social media platforms. We've got the price. We've got a gallery of images, which we can click and open up. We can step through those. You can see we also have information about the property and some key info, the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and so on. And I'll show you how to do all that. The description, all the kinds of things you'd expect to see. If we take a look on the right hand side, we can see this is the agent that's actually selling this property. So we can find out some pertinent information, the name of the agent, the telephone number. We can even send them an email directly saying that we're interested in this property and that property information will be transferred into the email automatically. You don't have to do anything. You can drop your name, your email, and so on inside there. And you can even select the type of inquiry that you're aiming for, whether you're a buyer, a tenant, or something along those lines. And then you can send your message and they'll get an email with all the relevant details. We can also click on the actual agent themselves to see what other properties they may be selling. So we can click and you can see this now gives us a brief bio over this particular agent. We can find out if they've got any reviews and ratings. We can find their contact details, the areas they cover, their position inside the agency that they work for. We can also then see all of the different properties they have listed under their specific account. If you want to take a look at the agents themselves, we can click on agents and this will give us an agent listing. We'll also take a look at applying some filters to these agents. Just haven't done that in this particular demo setup. We can now find out all the different agents. Again, the same information we just saw, but if we want to view their listings, we can click on that. And now we can see that page. We can find any reviews that are associated with that particular agent and all the properties associated with them. You can also see 
that each of these individual listings have some relevant information. The type of property, so it's a for sale, a new build and so on. Some information about the name of it, a photograph, the price. And we can also drop in these icons to say like the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms and so on. You can set as many of those up as you want inside your design. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that as well. So by the time we work through everything inside you, you should have a really solid understanding of how to integrate various different parts of Jet Engine, Jet Smart Filters and Jet Search, as well as Jet Review together to create something truly unique and something that goes way beyond what you can do with just WordPress alone. Now we've seen what we'll be building, let's briefly look over the tools we'll be using to build it all. Links to everything are listed in the description if you want to find out more or grab yourself a license for any of the tools. Now for what is a pretty comprehensive website, we're not using that many tools. Elemental and Elemental Pro because obviously we're building inside Elemental. We're using the Pro version because I want to have access to the theme builder. Jet Engine is going to be the backbone of all of the data we're going to be working with inside this particular website. Jet Reviews because we want to apply the reviews to the agents. Obviously, this is an optional step. You don't need to include something like this. Jet Search and Jet Smart Filters because that's how we're going to do the Ajax search and the whole filtering, which you'd need on a site like this. Finally, we're going to be using Ooboy Steroids for Elemental. Only reason I'm using this because it makes the whole process of laying things out in columns so much easier, but there's so much more you can do with that particular plugin. So I would recommend checking that out to see the kind of things you can do. Totally free plugin. That's what we're going to be using to do all of the sort of like back end side of things. And for the design side of things, we're simply going to be using the hello theme from Elementor because it's basically just a blank theme and allows us to create everything that we want to from scratch. Jet Engine recently released a new update that includes a real time saving feature called glossaries. Now, glossaries are basically a centralized location for repetitive lists of data. For example, if you want to use a list of property types in your custom post types or your forms, you can now leverage the power of glossaries and only have to input that information once and then you can reference it in all of the above scenarios. Now, better still, if you need to amend or add to the list of data, you can add or edit your glossary items and that will flow down to everything referencing that particular glossary. It's a real time saver. So let's start by building out the glossaries we'll be using in today's masterclass. To do that, we'll simply come to Jet Engine and choose the first entry, which is Jet Engine, and you should see glossaries listed on the left hand side. If you don't see that, you're probably going to need to make sure you've got an updated version of Jet Engine installed. With that being done, let's go into glossaries and we can now start going through the process of setting our glossaries up. So the first thing we're going to do is add a new glossary and we're just going to give this a name. And this is going to be the features. And this is just basically a list of features that each individual property may have. Things like air conditioning, you know, those kinds of things. So once we've set up the name for this, which is going to be our group of glossary items, we're going to start by adding a new field in. And each of these fields is basically just a list item inside our collection of features. So for this example, we'll start off with air conditioning. And this is the field value. But then you've got the label, which is what will be shown to the user in the front end. So the first part of the field value is what's stored in the database. The second part is the value we're going to see on the front end of the site. Now, these can be the same or they can be different. Doesn't really matter. And then you can actually set up how you want to output this when you create the template and actually output the glossary information. So if you want to see more about glossaries, I'll put a link in the description to the Jet Engine A to Z video that I'm going to release in soon via the, the Crocoblock website. So check that out if you want to see more about how to use these. The final item is, is checked. In other words, is this item going to be checked by default? In this example, we don't want to do that. We're going to leave that as it is. So that's all we need to do. So now I can go through and add in several more for different features that we've got for the property. I'm not going to bore you by doing this in front of you. I'll just quickly do it and then we'll come back and move on. Okay, so there's all the features that I wanted to add in. As you can see, it's just repeating the same thing over and over again. So that's our first glossary setup. I'm going to go through and create a couple more glossaries now, and I'll quickly go over those after I've set them all up, just to explain what they're there for and why I've created them. Okay, so here's all the glossaries I want to set up. The property type just basically allows us to use this inside the listing, and it kind of replicates what you'll see as part of the taxonomies. You then got the property status, which allows us to specify if it's things like for sale, for rent, a new build, an investment property, and so on. The agent service areas, in other words, where do the agents actually cover inside their business, in other words, the locations that they cover. And we've got the agent specialities, so you can see we've got different things like property management, real estate development, and so on. 
And then finally, we have the agent position, which is whether things like client managers, senior sales negotiators, those kinds of things. This just makes the whole process easier and allows us to quickly create very, very rich listings without the need to kind of go in and keep replicating the same data on over and over again. That's the benefit of using glossaries. Next on the agenda is setting up the post types for our real estate website. To access the post types, all we need to do is come into Jet Engine and choose post types. And we're going to create our first post type. So we'll say add new, and this is going to be the post type for property. So we're going to choose property being the post type name and a slug, which we're going to put in to be properties. Don't worry about checking this box. We're going to leave that as it is. We're going to leave the labels as they are. You can change those if you want to, but we're going to just let it fall back to the default options. Advanced settings. We're going to just make sure everything is configured the way that we want inside here. So we do want to make sure this is a public option. We want to make sure that it's not excluded from a search. So all these options can kind of stay as they are. We're not going to worry about anything inside there making sure that has archive is selected. Otherwise, you won't be able to create the archive as a template file, which is the last thing we want to sort of miss out on. And we're going to just specify that this is hierarchical. The menu position, we'll just drop that in position two. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the icon to have something that's a bit more in keeping. So we're going to look for this little house symbol, and that kind of makes a lot more sense. The th last thing we kind of need to do in this section is to say that we want this to support the featured image as well. So by default, it's supporting the title, which will be the name of the property, the editor, which will be the content, and we're just going to select the option for thumbnail featured image, which will be, as its name suggests, the featured image for this particular property. Next up, we're going to go in and start creating the meta fields that we want. So click on create new meta field, and then we can go through and set everything up. So the first one is going to be the property ID. Now this is going to be this is going to be the unique identifier for each of the properties. So this is more of an internal thing than anything to do with the database itself. So property ID, that's perfectly fine. The field is going to be a normal field. We'll leave this set as text because it's going to be a combination of text and numeric information. And that's the first field. Let's go to our second field, and this is going to be the property status. So this is going to be grabbing information from one of the glossaries we've just created. So first of all, let's just drop the label inside there. The name ID is perfectly fine. We're going to come down. This is, needs to be a select field type. So we're going to just choose the option for select. Once we do that, we can now say we want to get the options from a glossary. Check that option. And all we need to do is choose the actual glossary we want to use. So in this example, it's going to be the property status. And that's pretty much all we need to do there. We don't want to allow multiple values to be selected, but you could do if you wanted to, if that was relevant. Next up, let's just add our next field in, which in this example is going to be our property type. So we're going to just do the same again. Label property type, name ID is going to be pre-filled out. Field is fine. Field type is going to be checkbox. We're going to just select option for glossary as before. Select our glossary, which is going to be property type. And just make sure everything else is fine. That looks good to me. So we're going to come in and we're going to say add another field in. You kind of get where I'm coming from with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through and do the rest of these so you don't have to sit here and watch me doing one after the other. Okay, before we save or update this, let me just quickly go through a couple of the different fields that you probably may not be aware of. First of all, we're going to take a look at this features one, which, as you know, is taken from the glossary, which is just the features that the property has, things like air conditioning, those kinds of things. So we've got that from a glossary, so what you've seen me do at the beginning of this section. However, I've set to save this as an array because we could have multiple values inside here, so we need to make sure that we set this to save as an array. That's the only thing you need to know about on that one. And then the image gallery is just basically an image gallery, and it just operates slightly differently, so we can set that up to allow us to upload multiple images. And we can choose value formats and different things like that. So you can see we can do media ID, all those kinds of things. But we're going to leave that as it is for now. And we're just going to say update or create this particular post type. We'll now go ahead and set up the taxonomies we'll be using to group all of our properties together. So once again, we're going to be using another one of Jet Engine's features, and this is the taxonomy option, which is accessible from the Jet Engine menu in the bottom left hand corner. So this one is going to be the option for our property type and property location. So the first thing we're going to do is just choose to create a new taxonomy. We're going to set this up to be our property type. 
let it pre-fill out the next option. And this time we're just gonna link this to our property uh, custom post type. So what we're basically saying is that the property custom post type has a new taxonomy called property type. Just a great way of allowing us to sort of list things together. Next up, we're gonna come into the advanced settings and make sure everything is configured the way that we want. So what we need to do is just check everything is enabled. You can see all these options are perfectly fine. What we do want to make sure we have enabled is hierarchical. Now, more a case of from a usability point of view than from a function point of view. It just means that you can easily select any of the different property types when you add a new property without having to know what the names of them are and then start typing things in. For me, this is just a much more usable way of working. We'll add this taxonomy. Then we're going to come back out and we're going to create a second one. So again, we're going to come into taxonomies and from there, we're just going to choose the option to add a new option and we're going to just add in property location. Post type. Again, we're going to link this to our property custom post type. We're going to come into our advanced settings and just make sure that hierarchical is set inside here as well. Add our taxonomy and we are done with the taxonomy. So now if we take a look at the property section on the left-hand side, we've got property, add new, and we've got our two custom taxonomies, property location and property type. So if we hop into the property location, for example, we can start adding in locations for where our properties are actually gonna be residing. So let's add a couple of options in. Let's just say we want some properties in New York. We'll add that in. We'll add something in Miami. Add that in. And we'll just add another option in for, in this example, Los Angeles. Okay, so that's added those in, so we'll add those. Next up, we want to, we can add our property type options in. So we're just literally going to mimic exactly what we did in that glossary. So apartment, we've got loft apartments, we've got a house, and we finally got a condominium or condo. There we go, add that in and we'll just say we are done. Next up, we need to create the custom post type to hold the information for our sales agents. So adding our agents to our custom post type is basically exactly the same as we did when we added the properties in. So we're gonna add an agent inside there. Labels, we're gonna leave those as they are. Hop into advanced settings and just make sure everything is set up the way we want. Focusing primarily on making sure it has archive set inside there as well. And if we want to, we can change this icon over and we'll choose this option. Same again, we're gonna make sure this has thumbnail associated with it, and now we can just go ahead and start adding in our meta fields. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing like we've done before. So we're gonna start off in this example with agent license. This is gonna be a field, and this is just gonna be a sort of the ID number for their particular license, so it can be kind of checked out as it were. You know, you kind of get the idea. So I'm gonna quickly go through all of these again Nothing's gonna be any different to what you've already seen. We're gonna use some glossaries. We're gonna insert some basic text, some numbers, things like that, or what you've already seen me do. Okay, so there's all the meta field values inserted in there. We're gonna add our custom post type and we are done. So we can check our custom post types and you can see we've got agent and we've got property all set up and all of the details and values inserted into each of those custom post types. If there's one area that trips up a lot of people, it's setting up relationships between different post types. In this section, I'm going to show you how to set up the relationship between the agents who could have multiple properties associated with them and the properties themselves. So let's take a look at doing all that right now. So next on the agenda now is to set that relationship up. To do that, we're gonna come into relations in Jet Engine, and we're gonna create our relationship. So I say add new, and this is where a lot of people get confused. So the first thing you're gonna do is give this a name, and I would say give it a descriptive name. So this example is agent property relationship. So I know this is the relationship between the agent and a property or properties. So then we've got to set up the parent and the child. Now the agent is the one that can have multiple properties associated with it in this particular setup, in this scenario. So we need to set the parent to be agent, which means that the child posts are going to be the property. 
Once we've done that, we can then choose the relationship type. And we have three to choose from, one to one, one to many, and many to many. Now in this example, one agent can have multiple properties, but for this scenario, we're not having one property can have multiple agents. So that just means the whole process a little simpler. So this means it's one agent to many properties. So we'll choose one to many, and then we just need to leave it at that. We don't need to worry about doing anything inside the parent relation. And if we expand the advanced settings out, we can basically just leave these two options set up. This just allows us to have a kind of two-way relationship. So in other words, we can assign the agent to a, pro a property when we create that using the properties custom post type, or conversely, we can do the opposite way around. We can create a new agent, and then we can add what properties we want that have already been created to that agent. So it just means we can go either editing the agent to add properties or add the property via the agent. I hope that makes sense. You'll see what I mean when we take a look at actually adding in a property, and I'll give you an example of how it works. With that being said, there's our relationship done and dusted. We can hit add relation, and that's the relationship set up. No more complex than that. So now that we've done everything for the, the relationship and we set everything up, this is how a property looks. You can see we've got the standard WordPress title, content, and also a featured image. However, we've also got this section at the bottom, which in this example is called settings. However, this is where our property ID, our property status, all those custom fields that we've created are listed inside here. We're gonna come back to those a little later once we start adding some properties in, but what I wanted to just show you quickly is the related agent. So this is a property. So the related agent allows us to choose the agent that will be selling this particular property. If we hop over out of this and we just go into an agent and we just say we wanted to add a new agent, for example, we'll see again, this gives us all those custom fields and we've got select property this time, which would allow us then to find the property or properties associated with this particular agent. So this is what I want to just show you that two way link between properties and agents and how we can add either or depending upon which section we go into, whether we're an agent or whether we're in a property section. Like I say, I hope this makes sense that how this kind of works. And I will show you when we create our first property and or agent, how we link them together. Now, before we move to start fleshing out our real estate website, we need to have some initial data inserted so we can use that to build the templates needed with actual real world data. So let's take a look at doing that next. So adding in a property, really straightforward. We're gonna come into our property section and we're simply gonna choose the option for add new. And inside there, we're gonna just fill out some basic information. Now for ease, I'm just gonna simply use some pre-fill out kind of false data, just so you can kind of see how everything works. But I'll take you through, insert in the information for one, and then we'll take a look at how we can just add in some more. Okay, so the first we're gonna do, let's just put this New York Heights. We'll just drop in some basic filler text inside there. Doesn't really matter too much what we're gonna say. We'll make sure that our property is set in the right location. So we're gonna choose property location and we're gonna set that for this example to be New York. Property type, we're gonna set this to be an apartment. And then we're gonna just scroll down and we're gonna fill these out. We'll come back and set the featured image and so on in a moment. So property ID, we're just gonna call this one. Doesn't really matter. So property status, this is for sale. It's an apartment, so we're just gonna mimic the property type with the property type, which is our taxonomy. Price, well, it's gonna be an expensive one, this, isn't it? 500,000, I'm sure it'll be a lot more expensive than that. And we'll just call this City View, New York. I have no idea if there's a place in New York called City View, but I'm sure there is. Four bedrooms, four bathrooms, two garages. We're gonna call this 15,000 square feet. So I have no idea how big that would really be. And we're gonna say this was built in 2010. Our features, we're just gonna choose from here. So we're gonna say it's got air conditioning, it's got a dryer, laundry, swimming pool, lawn, balcony, security system, and central heating. Why not? Let's go to town. Choose media. So I'm just gonna choose some images I've already pre-uploaded. It's not too important what they are. So we're gonna choose this, 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 this. That'll do. Choose our media. So that's all our custom information sort of set out. On the right hand side now, let's just set our featured image. So we're just gonna choose an image on there. We'll choose this one, because I think this looks really nice. Now, the option that we can't actually do anything with right now is because we don't have any agents created. So we can't choose an agent right now, but we can add an agent and we can then associate them with this property. So let's do that. We're gonna publish this. We'll just get rid of this annoying thing on. 
Gutenberg. And there we go, there's our property all set up. So let's just hop back out of this now and you can see there's our first item. So what I'm gonna do now is just simply come over to the agents and we're gonna add a new agent in. So as you can see, this operates in a very similar fashion to what we've just seen with adding properties. Our custom fields are underneath and the relevant information on the right-hand side. So let's do the same thing again. This time, this is gonna be Samuel Palmer. We're gonna add a little bio in for him. We'll drop his agent license in and we're just gonna say his agent license number is that. Tax number. Again, just making these things up. Might not even be relevant. So his service areas, well obviously New York, because that's where this particular property is. But let's just say he covers New York and we'll say he covers Los Angeles. Specialities, property management, real estate appraising and retail leasing. And email, we're just gonna put in email at estate.com doesn't really matter what we put in there phone number there we go he's got a phone number and his mobile number and his website we'll just put in website.com now what position is this particular individual we've got all those options available to choose from in there so we're going to say he's a senior sales agent and as you can remember these are taken from the glossary which is a new feature inside jet engine so it just makes the whole process easy and the nice thing with working with glossaries is if we want to add another position or change the details of any positions we can simply just go into our glossaries make the change make the addition the update and that will be reflected throughout our entire site so pretty cool Okay, so there's the basic info. Let's just hop on now to the agent side on the right-hand side. Let's set our featured image, which is gonna be in this example, this is gonna be Samuel. So we'll upload his image and we'll just give him some alt text. And we'll just say, let's set that as the featured image. And there we go. So now any related properties, let's just start typing in New York. And you can see there's our New York Heights, which is our custom property we've just created. We'll select that and that's now been associated with him. So we'll publish this agent. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop back over to our properties and I'll just show you then how that's been added in. So if we go back to our properties and we take a look at New York Heights, you can see if we scroll down, you can see there's our selected agent and Samuel Palmer has now been associated with this particular property. It's as easy as that. You can see that two-way link is all set up and working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly go through and add a few more properties in and a couple more agents in, following exactly the same principle that I've just shown you right now. We'll have some more data to work with when we start building our listings. A key aspect to working with dynamic data in Jet Engine is setting up the listings that will be used to display each one of our listing items, items like our properties and sales agents. We'll start things off by setting up the properties listing. To get started with listings, all we need to do is come to Jet Engine and choose the option for listings. And now we can start creating things. So the first thing we're gonna do is our property listing. So let's just select that. Listing source posts is perfectly fine. We're gonna deal with the post in this example. Post type, we're gonna just choose this to be a property. Gonna give this a name of property listing. And we're gonna use Elementor to edit this. You could obviously use blocks if you wanted to through Gutenberg. We'll create our listing. And once that's created, we're now ready to start building out how we want to style things out. Now you can get as simple or as complex as you want to with these. We're gonna keep it straightforward, but the skills you'll see in this section are easy to expand upon and just repeat what I show you to add as much data and information as you want to. Now first up to make our lives just a little easier, let's set this environment up so it shows what we want to show and lays it out the way we want to. So to do that, we're gonna to come to the settings option, the bottom left open that up and go into the listing settings. And this allows us to configure a few different things. Listing source, we can change that to posts, terms, users, and so on. Post is perfectly fine in this example. The post type property, again, is perfectly fine in this example, but you can see all of our options are inside there. We want to work with agents and so on. We can set the templates up through that. Leave that as property. We're going to set the width to be 450 pixels because that's kind of be close to what we'd expect to see in a typical listing layout. And it just allows us to design things in a little bit of an easier fashion. Make the list item clickable. This is something we want to do in this example because we want to allow the user to click the image and so on to go and take a look at the actual property itself. So we can check that box. Then it gives us the option to say, well, what's the link source? Permalink in this example is perfectly fine, so we'll leave that. And we'll just leave everything else as it is. All those default values are perfectly fine. So with that being said, now we can start building the various different elements out to build up our actual listing layout. So let's start off by dropping the image in at the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just search for dynamic, and we're gonna use the dynamic image, which is part of Jet Engine. Now you could, if you wanted to, use the normal 
Elemental image and then just set that up to use the featured image However, we just get a little bit more control over how things work using the jet engine option So that's what we're going to do for this particular setup. Okay, so let's work through the options on the left hand side Image size full is going to be a little bit big for what we need So we're going to come in and say we'll try medium large No loss of quality, but it should save us a little bit of load in time Linked image we're going to select that option So the image becomes a link and you can see the permalink is the same as we just saw when we set the settings up and that's perfectly fine. We scroll on through. If you want to set any other options up, like the alignment and so on, you can do that inside here as well. And you can even drop in a fallback image just in case no images are uploaded. Up to you if you want to do that. Once we've done that, the next option we want to go through now is to set up some of the other things. So let's come back into our widgets. Let's just do a search for dynamic again. And this time we're going to grab the option for dynamic field. We'll drop that into our design. And you can see this now says the source is going to be post term user or object, which in this example is fine. We're just going to be using the default WordPress title for this, which is the name of our property and title is perfectly fine. So we can leave that set up as it is. Next thing we want to do is we want to drop in the price. So we're going to do the same thing again. We can do a search for dynamic. Dynamic field is perfectly fine and we'll drop that underneath and we'll come back to styling these a little later. So don't worry too much right now. So we need to change this now because the price is a custom field set up through Jet Engine. So to do that, we just change the source to metadata because we're dealing with a meta field. And then we can choose the meta field drop down underneath and choose the option that we want. So under property, you can see there's our price. We'll choose that and that pulls that data in. It doesn't look very good right now, though. As you can see, it just pulls in the number with no formatting or anything. This is one of the reasons why the jet engine options gives us so much flexibility. If we come down to the options for filter field output and select that, we can choose an option for callback. And the callback just basically means how do we want to handle the data that we're outputting? At the moment, you can see it's now just for grade this out because it doesn't really know what we want to use. So let's expand the callback option. And what we want to do is choose the format number. We'll select that and that opens up a lot more options. You can see our numbers come back, which is perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the decimal places to be zero in this example because we're dealing with thousands and tens of thousands and so on. So we don't need decimal places on there. So that's looking better. However, we're still not where we want to be. Next up, we're going to use the customize field output. We'll select that and this gives us this little macro, this sort of percentage sign and S. And that's just the macro to output this meta field data. In this example, the number. But what we can do is we can put things before and after this to expand upon it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to simply put in the pound sign for this example. And you can see now that makes a lot more sense. We've got 340,000. We know it's a monetary value. So that's how easy it is to do that. Next on our list, we want to add in some information about things like the number of beds, bathrooms and those kinds of things. So we're going to do the same again. Search for dynamic. We're going to drag in the dynamic field. We'll drop that underneath. And what we're going to do is just change this to metadata because it's a custom field. Open this up. And the first thing we're going to choose is the bedrooms option. And you can see that just pulls in the number three, which is okay. And you can use the, the different options I've just shown you. However, if we open up the customized field output, because we're using Elemental and we've got that set up to work with Font Awesome, we can use Font Awesome icons inside here. So all we need to do is hop over to Font Awesome, do a search for the icon that we want, click on the icon. And once we do that, it'll give us various different ways of selecting it. So you can see we've got the different types. We've got these little codes, the Unicode and so on. What we want, though, is this just little bit of code. I'm going to copy that HTML from there to so copy it. And we've got what we want now. So we're going to head back over into our page and we're going to just simply drop this in. And you can see once we do that, there's our icon. If we don't add any spaces or do any formatting, we can do that inside here as well. So really easy to do. And now you can simply go ahead and style this the way that you want. We'll come back to that in a moment, though. We won't worry about it right now. So what I'm going to do to make life easier is I'm just going to simply duplicate this one. And we're going to change a few parameters on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is change it from bedrooms. And we're going to just set this to be bathrooms. And what we're going to do is we're going to hop back over into Font Awesome. We're going to search for bath and we'll see what comes up on there. If we get something we quite like, there we go. This one will do. That's perfectly fine. And what we can do is we can just take that little bit of code. And once we can jump back into here and we can just simply take this out and replace it with our new little bit of code. And there we go. So now we've got a bath icon and a bed icon. So you could repeat this as many times as you wanted to to lay everything out how you want. 
So now we've got some of the basics in there. There's one more thing I want to show you before we move on to formatting this and laying things out to make it look much nicer than it does right now. We're going to create one more dynamic field. So again, same thing. We're just going to search for dynamic, drag and drop this, but we're going to put this right underneath our image because we're going to place what we have inside you once we change it to float over our image. And we're going to use this to sort of put in the property status, for example, whether it's a new build, they say retail or rental property, those kinds of things. So what we're going to do is change this over to metadata and we're going to just change the option over until we find property status. And you can see this is for sale. So before we move this around, let's just put a bit of style in so it just makes the whole process of seeing how it all looks a little bit easier. So first things first, I want to make sure that the HTML tag is set as either a div or a span. It just makes positioning things just a little easier moving forward. Once you've done that, we're going to hop over to the style section and we're going to just set up some of the colors. Now, I would recommend you probably set up global colors as part of your design. I haven't done that in this example because this is something that I'm sure you're more than accustomed to doing. And I'll add some colors as we go through. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set a background color on this. So we're going to change the background type and we're just going to choose a color. So we've got no global color setup. So let's just add some colors that I want to use. We're going to start by adding this orange in. So we just paste this orange color. There we go. And we're going to add that in. So we're just going to call this orange and we'll create that color. So now we've got a background color on this. So obviously you want to change the typography and the fonts and so on and the colors of that. So we're going to change the color over and we're going to set this to be white. And again, we're going to set this to be a global color. Always good to have black and white as global colors. Uh, we'll just set that to be white, create that color. Now things are starting to look a little bit more interesting. So the next thing we're going to do is just change the styling of the font itself. So what I'm going to do is come into the typography. We'll set this to be something. We'll try about 12 pixels, maybe 14. That looks a bit small. And we're going to just come in and we're going to set this to be a little bit heavier. And we're also going to set this to be uppercase. Okay, so that's looking okay. Maybe size 13. So let's put just a little bit of breathing room around this. So underneath the style options and the field, we're going to come into the padding. We'll try something like three. That looks okay. Actually, maybe even two. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we've styled it the way that we want. We just now need to go ahead and position this where we want to actually display it. To do that, we're going to hop over into the advanced section. We're going to come right the way down until we get to positioning. Now, by default, this is set to be default for width and position, but we need to change that. We're going to change this to be inline. And you can see that kind of just closes it up and it just moves it from being just a sort of entire row section. Gives us a bit more flexibility over how we can set things up inside you. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set the position to be absolute. So we're going to choose absolute. And you can see that pushes that right up to the top left hand side of the container that we have for this particular listing item. So now we can just position that as we want to by using the offset options. We've got a vertical and a horizontal offset, and we can also set this up to be different on desktop and those kinds of different things, mobile, tablets, and so on. Now, I'm not going to worry about showing you all these kinds of things. I'm going to show you one example of how we can do this somewhere in the region of about 14, well, maybe about 20 on there. And uh, we'll do about the same there. So that looks pretty good. That's looking the way I want. While we're at it, we're just going to select this entire section. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this over, this entire block, I should say. If I can grab it. Now, sometimes you'll see you get this weird little effect because we've got this sort of absolute positioned element. We can't grab this. So if you get that kind of problem, just use the navigator. Just come through until you find the item that you want. You can see this allows us to select everything. We're going to select the section, which is the entire area. And we're going to come to the column gap and set that to be no gap. So we get that right the way to full width. So now we're getting somewhere. Let's just push this over the right hand side. Now we need to deal with the styling and the positioning of all these different items. And this is where we're going to be using the Uboy plugin, which like I say, completely free, just makes our life just a little easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the price to start off with. Once we've selected that, we're going to come over to advanced and we're going to come right the way down to widget stalker. Open that up and we're going to enable this. And what this allows us to do, it allows us to use either the Flexbox model or a units model. Now, Flexbox is very useful, but for this example, we're going to stick to units. So we're going to select the first one. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically make these three different icons or these three different elements line up with each other. So the first one, we're going to set to have a value to allow us to have space over the other side. So we're going to set this to be something like widget width. I'm going to say 60%. And you can see this little green box now shows us that this is only taking up 60% width. We can adjust that if we want to later. We're going to come to the next widget. We're going to select that, go to advanced, right the way down to widget stalker and enable this, set this to be units. And we're going to set the max width or the width on this to be 20%. 
you can see that now brings that up in line and we can do exactly the same thing now for the third and final one so again into advanced into widget stalker enable this units 20 percent and now everything is all lined up now you might want to close those spacing up make them a little bit smaller it's entirely up to you and you can do this kind of thing by using some of the built-in options inside elemental but the uboy just allows us to do this a lot quicker and easier and i think it just makes the whole process a little bit more visual a little bit quicker to deal with okay we're almost there now for this first listing so what we're going to do is we're going to select the entire section and we're going to come over to the style option and we're going to give this a little bit of a, a border radius and a little bit of a drop shadow just so it stands off the background nicely so first of all we're going to come into our border and we're going to set this to be a border radius of eight we're going to work on an eight pixel model now you're not really going to see anything because there's no way of seeing this there's no difference between the background colors however if we just want to drop in a drop shadow we can select this and what we can do is we can just fine tune this to what we want so we're going to set our horizontal value to be five Vertical, we're going to be set into four for this example. Set a blur of about six because I want this to be quite subtle. And we're going to set our spread to be about minus seven. Now, you can possibly see it, but we're going to make this even more subtle by just reducing the opacity of the shadow. And there we go. So next up, we're going to come up and choose our image because even though we've put some rounded edges on this, you won't see that because the image sits on top of the actual section. So we're going to just come into the image, making sure that's the selected item. And we're simply going to come over into our style option and we're going to put a border radius we're going to unlink these we're going to say top of eight and we're going to say right of eight and that'll just do with the top left and the top right options inside there so we're almost where we want to be we just need to apply a little bit of spacing to these items and then just a little bit of styling to make them look just a little nicer so let's just select our title going to come into advanced first of all let's give this a bit of space uncheck these we're going to set 20 pixels left and right just to push it in to make it look nicer we're going to then just change the font styling on there a little bit because this is a title and it needs to be a little bit more heavyweight set this to be something like h4 for example probably a little too big in this case but we can style this individually anyway so we're going to come in we're going to set this to something like let's try 20 actually it's got a bit smaller than that okay that looks pretty good we're going to set our weight to be something like 500 that's okay i kind of like the look of that and i'm going to repeat exactly the same procedure now for these other options underneath okay so gone ahead applied the final little bit of style into everything inside you and we've now created our first listing so we can update this or save it whichever you kind of have to do and that's our first listing done and dusted let's put our newly created properties listing template to good use on our properties archive template so we're going to part build that properties archive next Let's hop over into templates and into theme builder and inside there we're going to create our first archive so we're just going to call this default property archive and we'll create the template we're going to put the basics in place to start off with so we're going to ignore any of these pre-built ones we're going to start from scratch and you can see i've already created a header and footer so don't worry too much about what's going on there these are just template ones and you could change these for whatever you kind of wanted to okay so what we're going to do is we're going to create a section at the top which is going to have an image in there and a sort of what this page is about you know the sort of title and then we'll take a look at creating the listings and some sorts and so on so let's just add in a new single section we're going to select that we're going to just come over to the height and we're going to set a minimum height and on there we'll try something like about 600 doesn't really matter too much we can change any of these values afterwards anyway hop into style and we're going to choose a background image we're going to find something that looks quite nice let's just choose something like this select that image there we go position that we'll do center center for example we don't want any repeat on there and we'd want to cover what i would suggest then we're going to do is we're going to come to background overlay and we're going to add an overlay on here so we're going to come in and we're going to just set a color we'll choose well actually it's just create just plain black for this example actually what we're going to do is we're going to set it to be a sort of bluey black somewhere around there just have a little bit of blue in there again we'll just add this to our global colors and we're just going to call this blue black and we'll create okay so there's our colors we're just going to make this a little bit more solid somewhere around there and we'll just grab a heading drop that inside there center it we'll set this to be h1 and we're just going to say this is something like find your perfect home doesn't really matter too much what we're going to put in there and we'll just quickly style this so our color we're going to set this to be our global white our typography we're going to just set this to be about 400 uppercase and we'll just 
push the size up just a little bit, maybe somewhere around 48. That'll look good. Okay, so there's our basic head in section. Underneath this, we are going to drop in a search and filter setup, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to come back to that in its own dedicated section. So we'll add that in a little later. What I'm going to focus on right now, though, is just adding in the listing. To do that, we're going to simply come over and we're going to do a search for listing. And you see there's our listing grid. So we're going to drag and drop that into our page. We're going to select it and make a bit of room. So let's just say we'll put 50 pixels margin above and below. So what we need to do now is select what listing we want to use. So we'll open this up and we'll just do a search for property. And you can see there's our property listing. We've only got one at the moment, but as we add more, we'll see more options inside you. So select that. And what that does now is that will pull in all the different properties. And you can see now what that's doing is that's using the layout we just created through the listing. So everything is laid out the way we want. Now it's a bit squashed up at the moment because I'm on a quite small screen here just to demonstrate things. But if I sort of close that up, you can see everything looks pretty good. And if we want to, we can easily make the page a larger layout. So we can select this section, come to our layout, and we're going to just say we want this to be 1400, for example. And then when we squash this down, we're going to get a bigger display. And obviously with more modern browsers, that's quite a realistic starting point. But it's up to you how you want to lay things out. I'll leave it set to that. Looks pretty cool. Okay, so that's how easy it is to drop the listings inside there. And we'll just select the listing again and make sure everything is laid out as we want. Column number, you can see we can set the various different values inside you, and three for this example is fine. And we can obviously go through and set things up on mobile and tablet. But this tutorial isn't about setting up mobile and tablet setup. I'm sure you can do that yourselves to fine tune the design. If you want to, you can then control exactly what is going to be displayed. Now, obviously, you want to show just the published, but you have all options if you wanted to inside there. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to say we want this to lazy load so we can just reduce the weight of this page as we have more properties. And you might want to sort of up the post number to something like 12. So when you add more items in, you'll have more properties. And I'll just quickly fine tune a couple of the other options on here as well. So we're going to say we want equal column heights just to make sure everything lines up nice and tidy. We're going to say load more. I'm going to say infinite scroll. So as you scroll down and we're going to leave it at that. We don't need to worry about post queries and terms and things along those lines because we're just having this as a listing. But if you wanted to use these, get a little bit more creative, you might want to sort of set the home page, for example, or an archive page to have featured images. Lots of different things you can do inside here. We're going to leave it set as that, though. So that's the first part. We've now got our property listing. Now, I also want to allow people to sort these in various different orders. We'll start off with a really simple example based upon price, but you could if you wanted to expand this to various different kinds of sorts. And again, this is just something that we've got built into Jet Engine, Jet Search, Jet Smart Filters, those kinds of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a search for sorting. And you can see there's our sorting filter. We'll pop that into the area above our actual properties. And what we can do now is we can come into our sorting list. And you can see there's some pre-designed ones inside you. We're going to get rid of all of those and we're going to build our own from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this really quite simple to start off with. We're going to set it up so we've got the ability to sort things from lowest to highest and from highest to lowest. So we'll expand that out. We're going to change this title and that's just basically what you're going to see inside the drop down select what do you want to order by well we're going to expand this out and we're going to say we want to use a meta key numeric because it's a it's a, a number we set up to do for the value of the property so we're going to choose that option and we're going to put the key in for that custom field which in this example is price now if you're ever unsure what that meta key is you can simply hop over into jet engine into your custom post type and then all of your meta fields are listed here and you can see next to them next to the name will show you what the actual meta field name is so for example when we're dealing with the price you can see price is the meta field so we open this up the name id is price all in lowercase so if you ever get stuck just reference back to that and it's going to make your life a lot easier copy and paste if you want to to avoid any kind of errors with capitalization spaces and so on okay so price is fine in there this example we want to set this to ascending and that's our first one so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this now and we're going to change this second option to be the opposite way around this time so we're going to just change this to be descending i'm going to change the label inside there for the title and there we go so now what we've got is we've got a very simple sort that allows us to sort it by highest price to lowest price or lowest price to highest price so what we're going to do is we're just going to just select this and we're going to do like we've done before we're going to come into advanced we're going to come down to widget stalker and we're going to enable the widget stalker set this to be using units and we're going to set it to be 50 percent even though it's on the left hand side, what we're going to do is we're going to come back up here. We're going to drag a heading in above this and we're just going to set this up to be 
a title so people know exactly what they're looking at. So we say this is our properties, H2 is fine. Let's just quickly style this, just set things up on here. And let's just say something like 24 pixels, for example, and we'll make this just a little lighter, something like that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just the same thing again. So we're going to come back to our widget stalker, enable this, set it to be units, set this to be 50%. And now we've got things lined up. And all we need to do now is select the second option where we've got our sort. And we're going to come into style. And we're going to just make sure that everything is set up the way we want. So we'll set our alignment to be right. And if we want to adjust the size of this, we can do that. So you can see we can adjust the width to make it just a little bit bigger. So let's just say something like 300 pixels. That would look a bit better. There we go. And if you want to style things and adjust the labels and all those kinds of things and buttons and all that kind of stuff, you can do that inside here. I'm not going to worry too much about it though right now. So now we've configured everything. We just need to go ahead and make sure that this is going to work the way we want it to. So we're going to come back over into our edit sorting filter option, expand the content option and choose what this filter is for. Drop that option down and we're going to say this is Jet Engine because this is where the date is coming from. Ajax is perfectly fine, so this will just update when you make a change to it. And you can see apply on value change, but you could if you wanted to drop in a button after it. Show apply button. In this example, we don't want to. For this particular label, we're just going to simply drop in the sort properties and we're going to say, yep, label block is fine inside there. Sort, everything looks good. Just hop back over here and we're going to go back to our label and we're going to make sure that's right aligned as well. And we're also going to come into the typography and we're just going to put a little bit of spacing underneath it. So we've got the letter spacing, drop that down a bit so it's not quite so in your face. There we go. And that's it done. We've now created our listing. We've applied sorting to it. We've also gone ahead and set up our header and we're all ready now to test this out. So let's just publish this page. We need to add a condition to this now that to say where and when this is going to be used as an archive. So we're going to add our condition, we're going to open this up and expand it, and we're going to look for the property archive section. And we've got the first option inside there is property archive. Now, the way this works is everything that sits below that, unless you change it, will also inherit this template. For most cases, that would be fine. But if you wanted to change it to have a different template for various different setups, like the property type and so on, you can do that. For this example, we're going to set it to be property archive and we're going to say save and close. That's the archive created. So now we've created the archive. Let's add that into our navigation so we can reference it and then let's test it out. Let's exit to our dashboard and from there we're going to come in to our appearance and into menus. If you haven't already got a menu created, just create a simple standard menu. And I just call this main menu and you can see home is set inside there and the display location is set to primary. So now we need to reference and include the new archive. But how do we go about doing it? Because, well, it's not actually available anywhere inside here. You can see posts, for example, and we've got pages and agents and property, but nothing to do with the actual listing for the archive. So how do we go about actually setting that up? It's actually a lot easier than you may think, but I know this is one of those areas that a lot of people stumble upon because it's not really that clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back out of this and we're going to hop into our post types, our custom post types we created with Jet Engine. There's our agent and our property. And there's the slug for each of those, agent and properties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the properties slug. I'm going to pop back over into our menus and we're going to add in a custom link. So we're going to open this up. We're simply going to drop in the link that we've just selected, but we're going to encase that with forward slashes. So we're going to put in like so. And what this means is that it doesn't matter what domain it's on, this will work regardless. If you wanted to put your full domain inside there, you could do that. So you could put www.mydomain.com forward slash properties forward slash would work perfectly fine as well. The link, we're just going to put properties. Let's say all properties. And we'll just add that to our menu. So there's our custom menu. So we'll add that inside there. So now if we hop back over into our test site, we're on the home page where there currently is nothing, but you'll see there's our all properties option in our menu. We'll click on that and that will take us through and you can now see there's our properties, everything listed inside there, all six that we currently have. You can see they're all random in their pricing structure. They're in the order that I added them in. So what I can do now is I can come up to sort and I say, I want to look at the highest to lowest. And there's our 15 million pound Miami views right the way down to our 340,000 pound man of view. Alternately, you can just simply choose the other option and that will reverse it. So pretty cool. Our archive template needs to lead somewhere. And in this example, it's our property single template. So let's take a look at building that next. Back in the template section, this time we're going to just use the option for single post. 
we're going to create our new template. So this is going to be a single property template, and we'll create our template from there. And then we can start building things inside our templates. The first thing I want to do is just close this down because we're going to start completely from scratch. We're going to hop over into the settings section for this particular page. I'm going to our styles. I'm going to set our background color. Now, I've done this on some of the other templates as well. I just didn't show it on camera, but all it is is just to apply this really, really pale kind of color to the background, which I can then use and put white boxes over the top because it just makes it stand out a little nicer. Okay, that being said, we're now ready to start adding things inside here. So we're going to just choose the option for a two column section. And this is where we're going to put things like the name of the apartment, the price, those kinds of useful things. So we'll select this, make sure we've got it selected and add a bit of spacing around it. So for this example, we'll just do 50 above and below. Actually, it might be a bit too much. Let's just do 20. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so with that selected, let's just come back to our layout and make sure everything is now going to sit in the right position. So we're going to make sure that this is set to vertical align of top because I want everything to align on the top section. Now we can go ahead and start adding all the items in. So let's just come into our widgets and we're going to do a search for dynamic. I'm going to grab the dynamic field, drag and drop that inside there. And we're going to change this to make sure it's right. Now you can see it's putting in hello world, which is just the default filler uh, sort of post that you have. So we need to change that now to know that it's working with the right info. So we're going to come down to our settings in the bottom left, come to our preview settings, change the dynamic content to be pre previewed to property. And uh, For this example, we'll just do a search for New York or something, New York Heights, there we go, apply and preview, and that'll refresh the page and you can see there's the right information. So now the preview information that we're going to be using will actually be a property as opposed to a default WordPress post. Again, this is one of those things that when you're new to working with this kind of thing, it can be confusing how you build things when you're not actually seeing the information that's relevant to the post type you're working with. Okay, so we'll worry about styling these things a little later. The next thing I want to do is to just sort of specify what kind of property this is. So we're going to do the same thing again. We'll duplicate this. So we'll just right click and duplicate. Make sure this is selected and we're going to change this to metadata because we want to grab one of our custom meta fields, change our metadata over and we're going to use the option for property status so we can see whether this is for sale, you know, investment property, those kinds of things. We're going to duplicate that another time. And this third one is going to be for the address. So again, we're going to scroll it down until we find the property information. We'll grab the address info inside there. Next up, on the right hand side, we want to put some sharing icons and we want to put the price and then we'll take a look at applying some other styling to this to make it all look much nicer than it does right now. So with that being said, let's just select the first option and we're just going to do a search for share buttons. And there you go, there's our share buttons. We're going to drag that over to this side. Now that looks particularly ugly, but we'll worry about styling those in a moment, but we will align those to the right hand side. And what we're going to do is we're going to just duplicate this a fourth time drag that over to the right hand side and we're going to just change this metadata is perfectly fine but we want to put the price in this time and there we go there's our pricing information and again we want to align this correctly so we'll hop over to our styles set this to be aligned to the right so there's the basic info next thing we're going to do now like i say is go ahead and style this to make it look a little bit nicer now to make this section a lot quicker i'm not going to bore you by showing you how i set up all the styling for all this i'm going to do that behind the scenes and we'll come back and we move on then to building out the next sections okay so there's the styling applied to the header section everything good on there so the next thing we're going to do now is start creating everything else so we're going to just add in a two column section and we're going to set this up to be like so and we're just going to select all this i'm going to set this to be 1200 pixels even though i did 1400 earlier on change it over to 1200 now because i think it looks better Okay, so what we're going to have is the left-hand section is going to have the information about the property. The right-hand section, a little later on, is going to have the ability to contact the agent that's selling the property. So let me just demonstrate that. This is what we're going to be working towards. So this is the main section we're going to start with right now. And later on, we're going to come back to this because we're going to build this out through some templating options. So this is the first focal point of dealing with the template. Let's hop back into our design. So what we're going to do is we want to drop in the featured image for this particular property first of all. So again, we're just going to do a search for dynamic, grab in the dynamic image, drop that inside there and post thumbnail is perfectly fine. And you can see it pulls in an image for us, which is great. Next on our list, we want to add the gallery of images in, which is one of our custom fields. So we're going to grab the gallery option, drop that underneath. And now what we can do is we can choose exactly where this data is going to come from. So we're going to use the option for dynamic tags, select that, 
and you can see we have Jet Engine Gallery as an option. We'll choose that. We'll click the little wrench icon there and we'll select the gallery we want to work with, which in this case is the property image gallery. We only have one right now. So we'll select that. And what that'll do is that'll start to pull through the images for us. And there you go, there's our images. So now we can configure this how we want. Now, because we don't know if these will be landscape, portrait, square, and so on, what we can do is we can just simply come into the option for grid and set this to be masonry. We can set the columns. In this example, I want to stick this to three. If we want to adjust the space in, which we're going to do, set that to about 15 pixels, that's perfectly fine. And then you can choose what size images do you want to display. So you can choose from any of the pre-built layouts and depending upon how big you choose to have these images you kind of control exactly how good quality they are and what to choose from here you can also choose what link you want to do now media file i would generally choose to be the option gives us the ability then to easily work with a nice light box effect and if you want to apply an overlay or control the way this all looks you can do exactly that from inside here other than that we're going to leave that as it is that's perfectly fine so looking at the finished product the next thing we want to do is drop in this section for the overview which is going to include the property id the details about the property the number of bedrooms bathrooms and again we're going to be using icons like we've done before so let's just hop back into the template we're working with what we're going to do is we're going to come in and choose an inner section. So we want to have just a little control over styling and so on. So we're going to drag and drop that underneath our gallery. And you can see we've got two columns inside there. We don't need two columns. We're going to just get rid of one of these. Just delete that completely. So we just end up with the one inside there. Now let's just apply a little bit of styling to this. We're going to make sure it's selected. We're going to just hop over into the style option. We're going to set the background color to be our global white color. And you can see that gives us a nice white box there. And we're just going to add in 20 pixels of padding inside there. So we get this nice kind of boxed effect that we work with. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is just simply grab a heading. So we're going to drop that heading inside there. We're just going to change this to overview. We'll set this to be H3. And we're going to quickly just set up some styling. So we're going to say the typography, we're going to use primary color, we're going to use the secondary color, and we're just going to tweak this a little bit. So before we do, let's just make sure H3, yep. And we're just going to adjust this to make it just a little bit lighter weight. So we're going to set that to 300, and we're going to reduce the size of this to say maybe 24, something like that. That looks okay. Let's just make that 400. Okay, so there's the first part. Next thing we want to do is select this and we're going to use that option inside our advanced for the widget stalker and we're going to do like we did before. This time we're going to set this to be 50% width and that means that we can line up this with the property ID which is going to be the next option we're going to drop in. So let's just choose dynamic. We want to choose a dynamic field which is part of Jet Engine. And what we're going to do inside there is we're going to change this over now so we've got the right information. So change this to metadata. We're going to choose property ID, which is the unique identifier that we created as a custom field. Once we've done that, we just need to customize the actual output. Otherwise, it makes no sense to anybody what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize this. There's our little macro. We're going to drop in the property ID, and put a space. And I'm also, you can see, I've just used the normal HTML tags to make that property ID just a little bit bolder so it stands out a little better. So that's pretty cool. Now what we need to do is come over to advanced like we did before down to the widget stalker and set this to be 50% so it floats on the right hand side. There we go and we can just find it come into style and we can just align this to the right hand side. So that's made that look a lot nicer. Next up we're just going to drop in a separator just to give us a little divider area between there. Drop that underneath. Now you can see this now sits underneath the box and what I want to do is I want this to be inside this in a section. Now it's a bit awkward sometimes when it comes to Elementor to try to get things where you want, especially when you're using this to kind of float your information left and right. So the easiest way, like we saw before, is to bring the navigator up and then you can use the navigator to position things where you actually want them. Now we'll set that inside there and now we can just fine tune that to get exactly what we want. So 100% is perfectly fine. We're going to set this to be, let's go for dotted. Going to our style, we're going to just adjust this to make it a little lighter so it's a little less in your face there we go all we can do is we can just simply come into our style option and close our gap up there we go that looks much nicer so next up we're going to add in some more of those custom fields so we're going to just repeat the process and i'm not going to go through every single one i'll show you the first two and then i'm just going to simply go and repeat that process for the remainder of this particular section so the first thing we want to do is we're going to come back up 
do a search for dynamic dynamic field drop that underneath our little line and this is now bringing in the default values we need to change this this is going to be the type of property that we're dealing with so we're going to just choose the option for metadata and from there we're now going to choose our property type which is a multi-select option you can see that gives us an error but don't worry we can deal with that quite easily we're going to come to filter field output and from the callback option, we're going to come down and we're going to choose the option checked value list or checkbox field values. So checked checkbox field values gives us any of those checkboxes. Now, obviously, we're only going to have one in this example, but you can see that allows us to put that in there. And the next thing we're going to do is customize this field output. And we're going to just drop in some information. So the first thing I want to do is kind of make things bold. So we're going to just type in the strong HTML code. I'm going to go after our little symbol our little macro we're going to close that up so we're going to close the strong side of things then we're going to put a line break in which is forward slash br wrapped in our normal braces and then we're going to put in property type and you can see that now tells us the apartment is the property type so we can see exactly what that's like so that's really straightforward the next thing we want to do is come over to advanced and under there we're going to use the widget stalker again and this is where we can just control exactly how wide this is going to be to allow us to get all of the icons we want inside there so let's enable it set it to be units and we're going to set this one to be just 25 percent and there we go so we've done the first one the next one we're going to do is along the same kind of lines and then like i say i'm just going to get on and do the rest so what we're going to do is we're going to add in another dynamic field we'll drop that underneath there so the next thing we're going to do now is set this to be things like the bedrooms the bathrooms and so on so we're going to just choose metadata we're going to choose for the first one it's going to be bedrooms once we've done that we're going to come down to customize the field output and we can do is now we can just use that normal kind of information we've got to put in the font awesome icon so i'm going to just quickly paste in the little block of code that I've just copied. And let me just explain what's going on here. You can see, most importantly, we've got the little macro, which is that percentage sign in the S. We've got a font awesome icon like we've seen before. So exactly the same as I've showed you where we've copied anything from here. You just literally copy this little uh, line item. Once you've done that, we wrapped it in strong tags for the icon and the number. And then the bedrooms underneath is just separated by a line break. Nothing, anything complex in there at all you can simply pause the video if you want to here and copy exactly what i've done if you want to replicate this for yourself finally all we need to do now is hop over to the advanced section into our widget stalker enable that set it to units and then we're going to set this to maybe 10 percent and there we go that's added that in there maybe 15 percent just to give us a little bit of space there we go so now i'm going to repeat this process a couple of times with some different icons with the same kinds of data for bathrooms garages and so on and then we're going to move on Okay, so there we go. There's all of those next set of options inserted in. So the next thing we want to do now is go ahead and get the description of the property in place. So first things first, let's just set up a title inside here. So we're going to just grab a normal heading, drop that underneath there. Now, again, you can see this is pushing it outside, which is one of the little quirks of trying to get everything lined up. So we'll just use the navigator to get that what we want. We're also going to duplicate the divider and set that after our header i'm going to change the heading inside there we'll set that to be something like h4 and what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be description okay let's just quickly style that as well just so we know actually let's just copy the styling from there so copy that paste the styling there we go that'll do we'll just remove that widget stalker from there okay and finally we'll just make it a little bit smaller as well excuse me being picky but part of what i do okay so finally we're just going to go in and add a little bit of space above that so maybe 20 pixels above so the next thing we're going to do is just grab the data to drop underneath there that'll have the description of the property itself and to do that we're going to come back out we're just going to do dynamic drag our dynamic field into position change that over to have content inside there and everything is now set up and good to go so that's the key information about the property all set up well right let's just make this a little bit wider maybe something like 25 and 75 percent that's a bit better it gives us a bit more breathing space to make the design look a little nicer okay so that's the key part now we want to drop in the features and the location information inside you so let's just close this up we're going to come back up and we're going to just pull in another inner section we'll drop that underneath 
we're going to get rid of one of those columns and we're going to just add a bit of space above this so we're going to just put in a margin of say 30 pixels there and 30 pixels top and bottom link those together and we're going to just do the same we're going to add 20 pixels of spacing around there and we're going to just change the background color to be our global white so now everything is kind of consistent with what we're doing above so we kind of get these nice blocks that allow us to see what we're doing okay so let's make our life just a little bit easier like we've done before let's just duplicate this divider and let's just duplicate this heading and then we can just reposition those then in our new section so let's expand that out and we're just going to grab those and put them where we want them so put that down there and let's just drag down a little bit so we can see what we're doing there we go gets a little bit finicky when you start to get more complex designs but that's part of the fun okay so our feature section is now ready let's just go and do a search for our dynamic fields drop that underneath there again position it where we want it okay so what we need to do now is change this over to metadata and this is going to show our features and this is one of those little things I'm going to show you something that's really useful if you're working with just repeating items just to make things look nice and again one of those things the jet engine just makes super easy to do so the meta field metadata is fine we're going to change this over now and we want to find the option for features so let's just find that inside there there we go which if you remember was just a checkbox and again we get this error because it doesn't know how to output the data but as always we can simply change that by filtering the field output and changing the callback and this is pretty cool if we do the option for checked values list what that'll do is it'll create a list of all of those values that's already quite cool so it now replaces the array with the values that will actually be an output however we can also set this to go into multiple columns so let's set that to be two columns so it looks a little bit cooler and also let's give it an icon to say well these are all the items of features it's got let's do a search for check and there's our check mark so we'll say yep we'll use that we'll insert that into there and if we want to we can change the color of this as well so we can style everything inside there but you can see now we've now got a nice looking checkbox list that says all the different features that this particular property has pretty cool so we're going to do one more thing now we're going to add the location at the bottom using the same technique we've just covered so just to make life easy let's duplicate this entire section so all our padding and everything's in place we're going to get rid of this dynamic data delete that from there and we're going to change this to location and finally we're just going to drag in a map so we're just going to do a search for map we'll drag that underneath there and all we need to do now is use the dynamic tags to reference our jet engine custom field and then we're going to choose the custom field which is the address and we'll check that option and there we go so we've now added in a map now it might not show up at the moment because the address is a little bit sort of made up a bit fictitious but you know you kind of get the idea and now obviously i can set things like the zoom level that i want the height of the map and so on so zoom level about 14 height well we could just adjust that to make it look a little bit better let's just say about 450 pixels there we go that looks pretty cool okay so other than the agent information which you need to add in on the right hand side a little later once we've created that template this is the basics of our entire single post template created so now we need to go ahead publish this and set up the condition for when and where this is going to be used so let's add our condition we don't want to apply this to all singular so we expand that out we're going to find property and we're just going to choose the option for property and then you can see we can filter this down to various different types of properties but we're going to leave this set to all so this template now will be used as the default property template for all of our properties let's hit save and close on there so that's our template created so let's hop back over now to our test site where we've got our listing so we'll refresh this to make sure everything is in right place so there's all our properties and now if we take a look at mana view for example click to go into there we're now going to go through and this is our custom layout you can see there's our gallery we can click on our images we can scroll through inside there we can scroll down there's our description there's our features our location map everything is in place and working the way we wanted it to next on the checklist is the listing template for our sales agents let's get stuck in and build that one next so we're back into the listing section now of jet engine and we're going to create our listing for our agent so we're going to choose the option for agent and need the post type and we're just going to call this agent listing and we'll create our new listing item okay so let's just insert a simple layout so we're going to set this option for two columns 
Okay, so let's start building everything out. So what we're going to do is come back in to our widgets and search for a dynamic image, drop that inside there and post thumbnail is perfectly fine in this example. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over and start adding the content on the right hand side. So the first thing you want to do is add in the name of this individual agent. So again, dynamic widgets, and we're going to do dynamic field, we'll drop that into there. You see it pulls the name in, which is perfectly fine. We'll just set that to be something like H3, so it picks up a little bit more styling, maybe H4 in this example. Okay, so next up we want to pull in some more dynamic data, and you're going to find this is kind of just a repetitive kind of thing. We're just going to pull in all the relevant key data. So for this example, we want to find out the position they're actually undertaking, so metadata, to change this now, we're going to find the information for the agent. And what we're going to do is we're going to just pull in the agent position. And you see, Brittany's a client manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply drag in the relevant information, and then we're going to move on to the styling side of things. I don't want to bore you with just going through the same routine that I've done before, which is aligning things left and right, pulling the data in and so on. So let me just do that off camera, and then we can move on from here. Now before I do go ahead and just start everything else. I want to show you one more thing to do with glossaries, which is incredibly useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do a search for our dynamic fields. We're going to drop that into the right hand section, making sure that it goes at the right place. If it doesn't, which it hasn't, I'm going to quickly adjust that through my navigator. Okay, so this section, we're going to change this over to metadata. And we want this to sort of reference information from our services area, which is a glossary. So we're going to just select the relevant field, which is going to be the service areas. And you see we get that error message like we saw before. However, if we come down to the callback option, enable the filter field output, open this up. Now you can't see this unfortunately because it is literally right at the bottom of my screen, but the very, very final item inside there says get labels from glossary data. We're going to select that. That continues to give us a different error this time because we need to tell it what glossary we actually want to reference. So you can see we get this new entry. We're going to just choose the option for agent service areas. And you can see that now pulls the relevant data in for us. So now what you can do is you can easily go ahead and set any delimiter you want inside there. So if you want to separate things by commas or slashes, whatever you kind of want to do, you can do that. And we can also use the areas, uh, the customized field output, and we'll just put areas covered. And you can see that now pulls in our list in a nice, clean and simple fashion. And again, you can apply any styling you want inside here. So I just wanted to sort of show you that because I kind of think this is an important thing if you're not used to working with glossaries as part of the new feature in Jet Engine. Okay, so let me just show you what I'm doing here just so you can kind of see what I've done with this and how I've laid things out because I'm sure I'll probably get questions on this. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to duplicate this. So all the first one is, is simply a heading. So I'm going to duplicate that and reposition it. So we're sitting there. I just applied some negative margin to this to make sure everything sits a little closer. And that's pretty basically it. The next thing I've done is apply a dynamic field. So we've already seen how to do this. I'm going to duplicate that and reposition that. And all I've done with that is the same thing again when it comes to the negative margin. And I've also, for the mobile and the mobile number there, the two different fields we've just seen, I've also used the option for Widget Stalker and set those to 50%. So all I need to do now is change the content of these, for example, to email and the second one for the dynamic data, that's going to be just the email option inside there. And that's it. It is literally just repeating the same thing with some negative margins, some dividers and so on to give us this kind of listing layout. I'm sure, there's lots of other ways you could do it. But this is a nice, simple, clean and flexible way of doing it referencing the dynamic data. So the final thing we need to do is add in an option for viewing all of the listings for this particular uh, agent. So to do that, we're going to drop in a dynamic link. Let's just search for that. We're going to do a search for dynamic. And again, this is another one of those widgets to do with Jet Engine. We're going to drop that where we want it. Now, you'll probably find that when you start messing about with these, they don't always go where you want. And like I say, this is where the navigator comes in super handy. Let's just make a little bit of space for this particular widget. So we're just going to come into our advanced and we're going to add a little bit of margin on this at the top. Maybe let's try 10. That'll do. That looks pretty good. Hop over to our style option and we're going to align this to the right hand side. Actually, under content, set this to the right hand side. There we go. And just change this to be the right kind of thing. So permalink is perfectly fine because that's going to link through to the permalink for the single post that will be the single post template for our agents. Hope that makes sense. And then we're just going to say view listing. 
There we go. So what this is going to do is this will take us over to the detailed page about this individual agent and the view listings is just simply going to give us a list of all the properties that agent actually has listed under them. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. This is the sort of finished result. There's our view listings. So we're looking at Brittany Watkins. We click to go and take a look. There's the bio for Brittany, all the details, including the reviews. And if we scroll down, this will have all of the properties currently listed under that particular agent. And that's all that link is going to do when we create the single post template for our agent. So let's just save our listing. In my case, it's updates. I've already saved as I've gone through, but there's our listing completed. Any other styling you want to do, you could do that here right now. Okay, so that's the listing side of things done. As with our properties listing, we need to build an archive template for our sales agents. So let's do that right now. So we're back in our theme builder and we're gonna create our new archive. So we're just gonna select archive as the option and we're just gonna create a new one. So we'll add new. This is going to be default agent archive. Create our template. And as we've done before, we'll just ignore all the default options that Elementor gives us and we're gonna create this from scratch. So like before, we're gonna create a really simple layout, two columns, add a little bit of space above and below. I'm gonna drop a heading in to the left and the right hand column. So we're gonna drag a heading inside there and we're gonna do set this to be agents. And we'll set that to be something like H4. We'll duplicate that and we'll just put that over the right hand side and we'll just say filter agents. So we can apply a filter inside there if we want to. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just find our listing. So we're gonna search for listing. There's our listing grid. We're gonna drag that underneath our agents, drop that inside there. Now we just need to select things. So we're gonna do a search for agent. There's our agent listing. We're gonna set this now to be just one column. And you can see that's brought in our listings as we'd expect. And now if we want to, we can assign any other items inside here. We can set up what data, if you want to sort of set published and so on, the number of posts, those kinds of things entirely up to you. We'll do lazy load. We'll also do load more and we'll just say infinite scroll. And that should be pretty much the entire thing. So we can publish that now. We'll add a condition and we don't want again to have this for all archives. We only want this specific to our agent archives. So we're going to scroll through until we find agent archive. There it is. We'll select that option and we'll say save and close and that's our agents. So the next thing we need to do is just quickly add this to our menu structure like we did before. So we're going to come over to appearance into menus. And like I've showed you before, if you're unsure what the actual code you're going to use for this is, head over into jet engine, into your post types. There's your post type slug, which is just agents. We'll copy that from there. Again, like I say, so we don't make any mistakes. Hop back in and we're going to do like we did before with the all properties. We're going to create a custom link. We're going to do a forward slash, drop in agent and another forward slash. And then we're just going to say view agents. And that's our menu. There we go. We'll just save our menu. And now let's just take a look just to check everything's working. So this is our test site. We'll refresh this. There's our view agents item. We can click on there and that takes us through. And there's our agents. So we've done that section. Now we can move on. While our sales agent single template is next and shares some common features with the likes of our single property template, it has some more advanced relationship features that I'll dig into and explain in this section. Okay, so let's create our template now. So we're going to go to single post and we're going to create a new template. So this is going to be default agent single. Create our template and once we've done that, we're going to just bypass any of the pre-designed layouts as always get rid of that completely and we're going to start something completely fresh. Now to make my life a little bit easier, the layout for this is basically going to be predominantly the same as what we just created for the agent listing. So I've already copied that. So I'm going to simply paste that design inside here and that just speeds up the process. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to add a bit of space above and below this. So we'll put 50 above and below. So there's the basic info. Now I can get rid of this view listing because that's not relevant in this example. We're going to delete that from there. But this just makes this part of it just a little bit quicker and easier. And while I'm at it, I also realize I missed out the little divider. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to drop the divider at the end of that design. There we go. So that's the first part. The next thing I'm going to do now is add some more information in to do with this particular agent. So we've got their bio and things like that. And we'll come back a little later and also include reviews. So what you can do now is you can go ahead and start adding in any more information you want. So we can just do a search for dynamic 
and we'll just drag a dynamic field inside there. Again, like I said, we get a little bit of a quirky thing going on, so let's just drop that wherever. That's good. And we're going to just change this over now to search for the agent inside there and say post content. And as you can see, it's kind of pulled in the wrong data. And that's because we just haven't told this template what we want to use to output the data on here. So we're going to come down into the bottom left hand corner into settings like before into our preview settings and make sure this is set up to look at agent this time. And we'll just do a search for Brittany. There's Brittany's details apply. And we should then find that will update and refresh the page and pull in all our relevant data, including now our bio. So it's just refresh that from where we just copied things over earlier on. So that's that side of things done. We're going to select this option and we're just going to come in to customize the output and we're just going to put in short code, the HTML code for strong. We're going to put bio inside there and we're going to close that out with strong again, just so it gives us a nice bit of styling. So now we get the bio for this particular person and that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so we'll worry about the reviews a little later, but the next thing I wanna do is something that is a little bit more advanced and that's where we need to link this particular agent to their properties. So this is where that relationship we set up earlier on actually comes into play. Cause obviously we've associated certain properties with different agents. So Brittany has her collection of properties. And then as an example, Samuel has his selection of properties. So I'm going to show you how we do that next. So let's just add a new section in underneath. And this is going to be where we'll see all those properties. So we're going to select this. We're just going to make sure that everything looks the way we want it to. And we're going to grab a listing. So we're going to come to our widgets. We're going to search for listing and drag and drop that inside there. And what we're going to do is we're going to reference our property. So we're going to do property listings because this is the kind of design that we set up originally, if you remember. So that's now put in the properties, but this is putting all the properties in. So we don't know who they're related to or anything else. So that's not going to work for us. So what we need to do is set up some kind of filter that specifies only the properties linked to the particular agent we're currently looking at are visible. So how do we do that? What we need to do is come into some of our options where we can go ahead and we can just set up a post query. And we're going to use one of the macros that Jet Engine has. Now there's a lot of macros and they can be kind of complicated, but I just want to show you exactly how this works. And I'll show you where you can get more information about those when you're ready to sort of go a little bit deeper into what you can do. Okay, so let's expand this out a little bit just so we've got a bit more real estate to work with when it comes to creating this query. Let's add a new item in. And what we're going to do is select the type of parameter, the type of query we want to work with. For this example, it's post and author parameters because we want to deal with posts that are associated with a particular uh, agent. So we're going to select that option and then you get all these different things which can look kind of daunting. But we don't really need to deal with most of these. We only realistically need to put one value inside here. And that's where we put in this include posts by IDs. Now, if I hop over and show you the macros, this is going to give you a load of information. And you can see the macros are all made up with a very similar style. You've got the little percentage mark that opens and closes the macro. You have the first part of the macro, in this example, the related children form. Then you have a pipe sign. Now you may not be able to see this very well on the screen right now. And then you have what you wanted to do. So you can see this is saying related children from post type slug. So there's the first part. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that from there because this is the one we want to use. We're going to hop back over into our setup. We're going to simply paste that into there. Now you can see that gives us no data found because well, it doesn't really know where to look for them. Because what you find is this post type slug, if we come back over here, the second part of this macro is a kind of placeholder. We've got to replace that with where we're looking for this information. So if you remember when we set the relationship up, the agent was the parent and the properties were the children. So what we need to do now is tell it the custom post type we want to reference. So if we come back into our jet engine, there's the post type slugs for both of our custom post types. So property is the child. So we're going to just select that, copy it, come back over, 
And where it says post type slug, we're gonna get rid of that, making sure we don't delete the pipe or the percentage mark. And we're simply gonna paste in properties. And now you can see that pulls up the properties that are related to this specific agent. Hope that makes sense. This can be kind of confusing, but hopefully what you can see is once you kind of get an understanding of the parent and child relationship and also how you use this macro to reference the relevant properties in this example, or the children, child, whatever you wanna call it, hopefully that'll make a bit of sense. I would recommend taking your time to read through this macros guide to get an understanding of it and then test it out a couple of times just to get your head around it. And if you want a dedicated video on how to do all of this, there's a link in the description below that'll take you through where I've dedicated an entire tutorial just to work in with these. Okay, so with that being said, we've now created that setup. We can now publish this. We just need to set up where we want this to actually be referenced to. So again, we're gonna add a condition in change this over, we're going to come down and we want to choose agent and we're going to set this to all. In other words, this template will be used for the agents and every single agent. So we'll save and close that and I'm going to quickly just apply some more styling to this just to tidy things up a little bit, but then we're going to test this out and I'm going to show you exactly how all of this works. Okay, so let's just take a quick look now. We're back onto our agents listing page and let's take a look at Brittany's listing. So we'll open that up. There's the bio, all the contact details, etc. We scroll down. There's Brittany's currently listed properties. And if we come back out of this, we go and take a look at Samuel's. We'll find that Samuel has different properties associated with him. And you can see there's all his properties. And if we click to go and take a look, we'll then jump through to our custom template we created earlier, all linked up for us. So you can see things are starting to fall into place now and we've covered a heck of a lot of different bases. But like I say, when you're dealing with relationships, that's one of the key things that people do stumble upon. So hopefully this has just given you an idea of how you can start to use these inside your projects to get a little bit more complex to linking things through to each other. It's time to continue digging into how to use relationships by building and linking our agent property sales contact form. Let's take a look at how to do that now. So next up on our list is this contact section over on the right hand side that's going to be based upon the agent for any given property. So there has to be some dynamic values included in this for the email address and so on. So to do that, we're going to be using another list in this part of Jet Engine. So we're going to come back into our Jet Engine setup, come into Jet Engine and choose listings. And from there, we're going to create a new listing. So let's just add new. Posts in, we're going to come in and choose agent from there. Set listing type, and this is going to be agent quick contact. I'm going to say create listing item. Okay, so once we've done that, we're then going to start referencing the relevant data and start building this form out. So like we did before when we're working with listings, we're going to come into our settings in the bottom section, come to our listing settings, and what we're going to do is we're going to set this to have a width of 350 pixels just to give us a good starting point. Now, it's also worth bearing in mind, do not make the listing item clickable. If you do, you're gonna cause yourself a few problems. So don't do that, because this is gonna mean the form won't work because this entire listing becomes a clickable object that would take us through to the permalink. We don't want that to happen. But we can, however, set the image of the particular agent to go through and take a look at their listing items and make that clickable. Don't fall into the trap of making the wrong item clickable. Okay, so with that being said, we can now start pulling in the relevant data. First thing you wanna do is just come in and do dynamic, and we want a dynamic image. We'll drop that inside there. Post thumbnail is perfectly fine. You can see that now pulls the image of Brittany in, which is good, and we're gonna set that to be centered. Next up, we're just gonna simply grab the name of the agent and the telephone number. So if you wanted to contact them quickly, you could do just that. So like we've done before, just simple dynamic data fields, drop that underneath there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just choose the information to be metadata, well, actually, not a light. This one is going to be post and it's going to be a title, which is their name. We're simply going to come over to the advanced options, down to our widget stalker, enable that, and set that to be unit and 50%, just so we can align things up nice and neat and tidy. So let's just duplicate that. And we're going to change this then to metadata. And we're going to change this to the agent's phone number. And there's the telephone. And what we're going to do is going to come down to customize the field output. I'm simply going to put in tell, colon, there we go. And finally, we'll just align that to the right-hand side so everything lines up nice and neat. So there we go. There's the first part of things. We can adjust paddings and spacing and so on, but like before, I'll do that off camera so you don't have to watch it. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is grab the normal form element that's part of Elementor. So let's just grab that. Where's our forms? There we go. Let's drop that underneath there. There's our form. Now we can just change a few parameters on here. Name, email, 
We also want to add phone in. So let's just duplicate this and just change the details. This is going to be a telephone number. Set that on there. Change this to phone. Change the placeholder to phone and hop over to advanced. And we're going to set this to be phone as well. There we go. And message is perfectly fine. We're going to add one more item underneath, which is going to be a select field. And this allows us to just choose what kind of information we are actually requesting. So first of all, let's just set everything up inside here. So let's just put in the name for this or the label for this is inquiry type. And all you need to do if you've never used a typical select field inside the former jet engine in Elementor, you simply just separate each element by putting on its own line. So now we've set everything up inside there. That's what we want. Now we can do a couple of other things before we move on. We need to grab the agent's email address and currently we don't have that. So how do we do it? Well, we can use hidden fields and this is one of the beauties of working with forms. We can add a new item. We're going to set this to be hidden. And from there we can say, right, label. Well, it doesn't really matter what label we put in. We'll just put agent email in just so that'll pass through onto the form. And if we hop over to advanced, we can set a few things up inside here. So the default value is currently empty, but we can use dynamic tags. So let's just click on that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the relevant information. So we're gonna scroll through until we find jet engine. We're gonna choose a custom field, and then we're gonna select the custom field, and we're gonna go up to the agent information and find their email. So that will now be stored as a value inside the form. Even though we can't see it, it'll be stored. Gonna give it an agent underscore email as an ID, just so it passes over, we wanna use it, and we'll just reposition that out of the way. So that's really all there is to the first part of this. The third and final thing we're gonna do is add another item in, and this is gonna be an acceptance item. So this means that they've got to confirm that they're happy with us having their information and linking to a terms of use page and that kind of thing. Up to you how you'd wanna set this up, but it's quite easy. We're just gonna choose the option for acceptance. The label is just gonna be, in this example, acceptance. Even though we won't see the labels, it is required because we wanna make sure that they absolutely confirm they're happy with it. And then we can put the acceptance text in and I'm just gonna drop that in there with a little href that'll link through to what would be my privacy policy. And like I say, this is something that all they see is like you can see this little checkbox. So that's everything we need in place. Now we can set things up. So we don't want the labels to display inside here. That's cool. Buttons is perfectly fine. We're gonna change that and we're gonna save this to be send message. There we go. So that will send the message. Actions after submit, well, we want this to go to email and we'll leave those values as they are in there. So we're gonna say the email and you can see we can choose where this email goes to, those kinds of things. So we want this to go through to the agent's email address, not a standard email address, because obviously each individual property listing will have a different agent associated with it. So you want the form to be sent through to the right agent. So how do we do that? Well, this is where we go back to our form fields. And this is why we put that agent email as a hidden field, because now we can use that in our form. So let's go to advanced. Let's just grab the short code for this. Let's have a short code for that specific field. We're gonna copy that from there. We're gonna come back down to our email. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just delete that default email, and we're gonna simply paste in the email address, which is gonna be that hidden ID field that has the agent's email details inside it. I hope that makes sense. And again, I've got a dedicated tutorial to show you exactly how to do all this kind of thing. I'll link to that in the description as well. Okay, so we wanna change the subject to something that's a bit more in keeping. So when the agent gets the email, it makes a bit of sense to them. So we'll just put that inside there. And now we can just make sure everything else is configured as we want to. So the from email, well, we can set that up to whatever you kind of want. You can have a default email address that comes from the actual website itself, that's fine. Uh, from name, we're just gonna say, my real estate site. Okay, so the reply to, we're gonna just change that to email field because obviously you wanna to reply to the person that sent the email, not to any other random email address. And this is where we're gonna use the metadata information underneath. We're gonna remove the things like the credit and the remote IP, we don't want that, or the user agent, but we are gonna leave the page URL inside there because this then will pass over the link to the page for this specific property. So then when the email goes through to the agent, they can just simply click on that, go straight to see which property has been talked about and have access to everything they want inside there. So that's that side of things. So all that's left to do now is just quickly go ahead and style everything inside here and I'll do that and then we'll see how we can insert this into our template and then we'll double check that everything is working and test things out. Okay, so let's just simply go back into our templates now and we're gonna open the single property template up and edit that with Elemental. And we can now drop in that listing. So once that's loaded in, 
we're going to come over to this right hand column select inside there do a search for our listing drag and drop that over onto the right hand side select the listing we want which is going to be agent quick contact and that will pull things up inside this. We're going to set this to display one item and one item. So that will put that information in there. But how do we know if it's the right person that's been associated with things? Well, this is where we start to use those macros again. So let's take a look. We'll make sure that the listing is selected. And then on the left hand side, we're going to come down to our post query. Like we did before, let's just expand this out a little bit so we can see a bit better what we're doing. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab another option so this time we're going to choose again post and author parameters and we're going to be using a different macro this time so we just drop the macro inside there and then we're going to explain things so related parents from an agent so let's hop back over to our guide so there's our second macro our related parents from post type slug so like we saw in the first one which was the related children from in other words the children in that example was going to be the properties associated with the agent. This time we're doing the reverse. We're saying what's the parent that's associated with this specific property. And as you can see, we've got the post type slug, which is the same as we saw above, and that's what needs to be replaced. And in this example, it's going to be agent because that's the parent. So that's exactly what we've done here. Related parents from agent. That's it. That's all we need to do. So once we've done that, we've applied the macro to this, we can simply update our page and then we can go and test this out to make sure it's showing the correct agent for these particular properties. So we're back on our property listing. You can see there's all our properties. So let's take a look at the first manner view and you can see that's one of Brittany's properties. So we come back out of there and we'll try a different property this time. We'll say the Miami views and you can see that's one of Samuel's. Come back out. We'll come down and take a look at the second manner view which again is another one of Samuel's. So now we can see that this is pulling in the correct data. Next thing we want to do is just make sure that our contact form is working and sending through the relevant email to the correct end user agent. Okay, so next up, let's just test the email system out to make sure that everything is working there. So we'll just do this and we'll just put in some fake details, my phone number, a message, and we'll say, I'm a buyer. We'll confirm that, we'll send our message, and the form has been sent successfully. Now, obviously, with any kind of form you set up when it comes to Elementor, you could send this to a different page if you wanted to. Lots of different ways in which you can handle the end result. But that's that side of things done. As you can hear, the email has just come in, so let's just take a little look now at exactly what we see on that email. Okay, so there's the email that's come in, and you see all my details are on there, including the URL directly to the page Everything is included. Now there's lots more you could do with this kind of setup. This is just really scratching the surface, but it's a nice, quick and easy way of having that immediate contact for someone that's interested in a property or a product or whatever it is you're kind of building your site on. So pretty cool to see. Now things are shaping up nicely. So let's put our creativity to good use by designing and building our homepage. So let's add a new page in and we're just gonna name this homepage and we'll just publish this. And then we'll edit this with Elementor. Now, there's still a couple of things we need to flesh out. We need to build out the filter system. We need to build out the search system. So we're going to put the kind of placeholder data into place right now, and then we'll take a look at adding those extra features, building those, and adding them to the relevant templates and pages. So first of all, let's get rid of this annoying home page at the top. Let's just come into our settings and hide the title on there. So that's that side of things done. We're going to add in a single row column section, and this is kind of going to be our hero section for our site. So we're going to select that and we're going to set this to be, well, we'll come in and we'll set a height and we'll set a minimum height and let's go for something like 600. Obviously you can get creative and do what you want with this kind of thing. Next up, we're going to put a background image in there to give us a nice sense of focus. So we're going to jump over to style, come into background and we're going to select a nice background image. So let's find something that I think looks pretty cool. Let's just say I like the look of this one. We'll insert that into there. We'll set this to be sent to center. We're going to set this to have no repeat and we're going to set it to cover. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Next thing we want to do is just drop a background overlay on there to make it a little less in your face. And we'll have some space then to give some separation to the search and any kind of text we want to place on there. So background, we're going to set this to black. And what we're going to do is just tweak this a little bit. There we go, somewhere around there. That's our blue black, I believe. So that's that side of things done. 
Next up, we want to put in just a title. So we're going to just drop a heading inside there, set that to be centered, set it to be H1. What we're going to do is just put a nice kind of call to action, an aspirational quote of find your dream home. And then we can just set the styling on this. So color, we want this to be white so it stands out from there. Come into our typography and we're just going to bump the size of this up until we get somewhere around about the 60 pixel mark. Set this to about, hmm, actually let's go for something quite slim like that and we'll set this to be uppercase. Okay, so there's your aspirational quote and underneath that is going to be where our search is and then underneath there is going to be our filter setup. But for now, we're going to leave those as they are and let's just add the next section in, which is going to be the section for our actual property listings. So again, like we did before, let's just drop a heading inside there, make some space on this. We'll set 50 above and below. We'll set this to be centered. So we'll just select our text. And what we're going to do is we're just going to tell people exactly what they can do, which is discover our latest properties. We'll center that inside there. Font size, everything looks perfectly fine on there. That looks pretty good. We won't worry too much about that. And then we'll put a sort of subsection underneath there. Drop that underneath. Set that to be something like H5. And we'll just put in some lower mips and text and center that. Finally, let's just move that up a little bit and we'll just say maybe minus 10. That looks pretty good. I like the look at that. Okay, so next thing we want to do is drop in our list in. And this is just going to kind of display a range of our, our most recent properties. But you could set this up to list anything you want. You could have featured properties with a checkbox and then filter based upon that. So many different things you can do. Okay, so let's just do a search now for a listing. We'll drag and drop our listing underneath. And we'll select our listing. So we'll just call this property. There's our property listing. And three columns is like we did before. What we're going to do is just select this section, come back up, set this to be 1200 wide. And we'll grab our second section and do the same on there just to give us a little bit more real estate, as it were. Pardon the pun. Okay, so there's our properties inside there. Everything's looking the way we want. And if you want to set up like any parameters, things like lazy loading, the number of properties and so on, you can do all of that inside here. I'm going to leave this set to be just showing six properties, though. That's perfectly fine and dandy for this example. Obviously, you get a lot more creative with this, but that is the basics of our home page done. So let's just update this page. What we're going to do then is we're going to hop over into the settings for our entire site and set this as our home page. So we're going to come down into the settings section, into reading, and from there we're going to say a static page is our home page and choose home page and save those changes. Now we can just take a look at this on our test site. And there we go, looking pretty cool. Everything is set up. There's our images, there's our properties. We can click and go through with the property. So everything is kind of falling into place now. We've got all the property listings set up, the agent properties, the listings for the agent and so on. Now it's time to get to the key component of any listing website, the ability to search and filter the data we've added. We'll start with an Ajax search function and then we'll move on to building several different types of filters. Now, before we get stuck in and start setting up our searches and filters, let's just quickly go and take a look at the settings for our smart filters. So inside here, we can do a couple of different things. We can choose the index of settings, the general settings, and so on. Now, you can see by default under general settings, you've got all of these different options on the different kinds of searches and filters and those kinds of things, most of which in this example, we're simply not using. It doesn't matter whether you enable or disable these from a performance point of view, really. It's more to do with an ease of use when you're designing and setting things up. So we're going to disable everything that's not relevant to us. We're not dealing with products. We're not dealing with WooCommerce. We'll leave the Elementor options. We're going to get rid of the calendar, WooBuilder, and that final WooBuilder. That just means now we've only got three kind of sources, which just makes things a little bit easier. Index of settings, if you come in there, you can use indexed filters if you want to. I've already covered this, I believe, in a di different tutorial, so I'm not going to go over too much over that. And if you are using the URL structure, you can set that up to be plain or permalink. And this is just how your URL structure is actually going to be displayed. Now, unless you are using the sort of option to click a button and have the normal filter, you're not using the Ajax option, this won't really do anything because when you're using Ajax, nothing shows up via the URL. But if you want to use a normal sort of clicker button and you want to have the ability to share that permalink, then the permalink option is going to give you a better kind of way of laying things out, a little bit neater and tidier. Just wanted to sort of show you those things. So with that out of the way, let's just jump over into our smart filters and let's take a look at setting up our first one, which is our property search. So let's add new. 
We're going to give this the name of property search so it makes some sense to us and we're going to give it a label of property search and an active filter label of property search. These are just kind of referencing in various different places. Next up, you've got your filter settings. In other words, what kind of filter is this going to be? And Jet Smart Filters and Jet Search kind of treat everything as a filter, whether it's a search or a filter. So once you understand that, it'll stop any confusion for you looking for the search options. So filter type, we're going to select from there and we're going to just come down and choose search. The placeholder, search is fine, or you could say search properties just to make it a little bit more obvious exactly what they're going to be doing. So search properties, and then you can choose search by, and you can see we can have a default WordPress search or by custom field, a query variable, but we're going to leave this to be a default WordPress search for this example, and we're going to hit publish. That's our search filter basically set up. So now what we can do is we can go back to our homepage. So to come back into our pages, open our homepage, edit this with Elementor, and then we can drop our search icon inside there to make things look a little bit cooler. So let's just do a search for search, pardon that pun again, and what we want is the Ajax search. So we're going to grab that option, I'm going to drag that underneath our heading section, and that's going to put our Ajax search in. So now we can go ahead and set things up the way that we want. So we can configure this, style it, do all those kinds of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we want responsive from mobile or responsive form on mobile. That's that side of things then. We can come into our search query if you want to and you can choose what sources you want. So inside here, we're gonna set this up to be only for property. We don't want it to search anything else. You can set terms and things like that if you want to. Searching custom fields, you can add extra custom fields inside here. So comma separated custom field keys list. So you could do things like your price and so on. So we can say price. Uh, let's have a little look. Let's hop over into Jet Engine and see what other fields we can reference. You can search for things like bedrooms, bathrooms, garage, those kinds of things. But for this example, we're going to keep this fairly simple. So we'll just say price, bedrooms, for example, you know, those kinds of things. So it allows us to filter through a, a range of different things. But we're going to use the filters because that's kind of be more where we're going to go through and set things up to do what we want. We can filter things down. The search is kind of more cursory and not something I'm going to worry too much about. However, you can see we've got a ton of different options we can configure. So you've got things like your results area. You can configure this, the thumbnail, placeholder, show product price, show product rating, all these kinds of things. So I would say really get stuck in and have a play about with those to see exactly how everything works, like show meta after, you can specify where it's going to be and so on. I'm not going to worry about those sides of things. I am going to quickly just go ahead and style this and then we're going to move on to creating the more fun thing, which is the filters. Okay, so there's all the styling and everything set up. Now, if you'd like to see a more detailed, thorough tutorial on how to use the search function, Jet Search, let me know in the comment section below and I'll create something specific that if enough people are interested. Like I say, there are so many options inside you that it would take an entire tutorial for me to go through everything and show you. So I just kind of covered the real basics just so you can at least get a search up and running in this particular example. So like I say, let me know in the comments if you were interested in something like that. Okay, so let's just quickly test our new search out. So let's just do a search for New York, for example. And there's our property and you can see this shows us the thumbnail of the property, the name of it, and a little brief synopsis of the content. But we included things like bedroom and we included things like price and so on. So how would we go about actually just getting that to display? Well, let me just hop back over into our search section, make sure it's selected. And underneath the content section, we're going to come into the custom fields area and we can show meta data before or after the title or meta before or after the content up to you how you want to deliver it. We're going to choose this option. I'm going to say, well, we say before, after, doesn't really matter. We'll go for that. So then you can just drop in the items you want to reference. So let's just expand this out. So the key is basically what we've got inside Jet Engine and our custom post type. So things like our price address and so on. So for this example, we'll just put price in there, which is what we want. Then we're going to put price in for the label, and then we can use the value format and we can just put the price or the pound sign inside there. We could then add another item if we wanted to, and this time we'll just say bedrooms. And we'll put the label of bedrooms, and believe it as that, to be honest. And you can keep on adding if you want to, and we'll update this now. We'll hop back over to our test page and refresh this. And we'll do another search now for that New York property. And you can see there's New York Heights, the price 50,000 bedrooms for. So you can see we can add this data inside there. If you want this to be in line, so you can see the price and the 50,000 or 500,000 is not quite what we want it to be. You can simply come in here, take out the label side of things, and we could just drop price inside here, and we'll just 
update this and that then should put all that on the same line so let's just refresh do a search for new and you see there's our price 50,000 and so on so that's how you can add in the metadata to get feature rich ajax results for your searches so that's pretty cool to see now let's move on to those filters okay so the filter set that I'm sure most people are interested in finding out is what's called a hierarchical or dependent filter set. In other words, if we come back over to our test site, which I finished the original one, just to show you the demo site, if we take a look, our property type and property location, these are kind of dependent upon each other. So once I choose property type and say, for example, house, then the value in the next one, the property location will change. So you can see this is showing Cardiff. If we choose apartment, this will show Dublin and London. So this is the first kind of filter that we're going to look at creating. So let's just add a new filter and we're just going to call this property hierarchy just because it kind of makes sense to me, but you can call it whatever you kind of want. And we're just going to call this for the labels and so on hierarchy for each. doesn't matter. We're not going to show those anyway. The filter type in this example is going to be a select option. Is it hierarchical? Yes, it is. So this just basically says these are going to be related to each other. And then we're going to put the filter hierarchy in. So this is going to be where we start off in this example, property type. Then the second one is property location. And if you want to add a third item in and a fourth item, you can do as long as that hierarchy makes sense. So what we're going to do, first of all, is add a new level in. And this one is going to, first of all, be our property type. So we're going to add a label of property type. We're going to put a placeholder in and we're going to put in any just for the placeholder and then the taxonomy we're going to grab that from and this is the thing these are all coming from taxonomies so we're going to just open that up and we're going to come down and say property type at another level and this one's going to be the property location so this is the second level of our dependent options any is going to be the placeholder again and what we're going to do this time is change the taxonomy and this time it's going to be property location that's it that's all we need to do if you want to add a third level you just choose another taxonomy and add that into the next level and so on and so forth so that's that side of things completed we can publish that filter and before we go ahead and insert this into the design let's create the other couple of filters we're going to be using just to kind of flesh out what we have here which is the property price the number of bedrooms the square foot and so on and you could stack these up for number of garages all those kinds of things but let's keep it simple and straightforward and learn the techniques and then you can expand this as and when you're ready okay so let's add a new filter and this one is going to be our property price so as before, let's just give this a name, filter label and filter active filter are going to be the same property price. What kind of filter type is this? Well, if we look at our example, it's a slider option. So what we're going to do is we're going to just choose a range, which allows us to set a range of values. You can set your value prefix because we're dealing with money here. We're going to put the pound sign in front of that. But if you want to, you can do, you know, suffixes and prefixes and all those kinds of things. We're going to put the thousand separator in, which is going to be the comma in this example. Decimal places are relevant. Number of decimals, we're going to make sure that's set to zero. Our minimum value, we're going to set to something like, I don't know, 250,000. And our maximum value, we're going to set to something like 2 million. And then you can set your steps. So you can set this up. We're going to set this in like 5,000 pound increments. So that's that side of things done. The next thing we need to do is choose the query variable. Now, if you're unsure what your query variable is, we're setting a range slider for the property price. So if we hop over into our post types, price, we open that up. There's the name ID for that particular field that we're going to use to filter against. So we'll copy that, head back over and just simply paste that inside there. And that's the golden rule with this. You're saying what kind of filter it is. Even though you're putting the data in manually in this example for the range from the 250,000 up to 2 million, you're still filtering against data that's inside your database from a custom field value. Custom field name in this example is price. So that's all you're really doing in there with the query variable. So with that side of things done, we'll publish that option. And now we're going to add in another smart filter. So we're going to add a new one in. This time we're going to add in the option for the bedrooms. So same as before, we're going to give this a name, filter label, active. This one, again, is going to be a range, so no different there. Value prefixes, we don't need to worry about anything like that, or thousand separators and so on. Minimum value, because obviously every property is going to have at least one bedroom, unless it's commercial. And we're, point, we're not actually covering that in this tutorial. And a maximum value. Well, we're going to say there's no more than 10 bedrooms and a step of one. That's perfectly fine. So our query variable, again, if we hop back over into our post types, Take a look, there's our bedrooms, there's our name stroke ID. We'll copy that from there, head back over, paste that into our query variable. 
that's that side of things done publish that one i'm going to do one more so let's just add one more filter in so let's just add new and this time we're going to do square foot for the amount of area inside these properties so same again name filter label active blah 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 you should be used to it by now gonna to come to range again so i'm going to put in the suffix is going to be square foot and what we're going to do then is we're going to say minimum value of zero well actually that makes no sense minimum value of 1000 and a maximum value in this example of 20,000. i'm sure you can get bigger and we'll set the step value of 100 and finally we just want the query variable so we'll just hop back over find the square foot option for the size of the property open that up grab that name id hop back in there drop that into our query variable and hit publish and that's all of our filters set up so if we take a look now we've got five different filters including our search so let's take a look now at how we actually go and put that into our setup and then we can copy and paste that into the various different pages that need to reference this particular filter set so we're going to start off working on our home page doesn't really matter where you start it's not particularly relevant so don't worry too much about that okay so what we need to do is just open up our navigator a second and we're going to add a new section in so let's just add a new section one column one row and we're going to simply drag that into position so that needs to go around right over there there we go there's our setup so what we need to do now is go ahead and start putting in the relevant pieces of filtering information so let's go ahead and do our hierarchical search so this is a select so we're going to do a search for select we'll drag and drop that into there and now we can choose what select filter we want so we're going to start typing in hierarchy and there we go oh, property hierarchy we'll select that option and you can see that now inserts it into there for us so now we can go ahead and configure this how we want so the first thing is select this filter for expand that and you can see now our list which i showed you in the settings of jet smart filters and jet search is a lot shorter and a lot smaller so we know this is going to be using jet engine information so we'll select that leave it set as ajax value change is fine so this will update whenever you change a value so it's just dynamically updating the info on screen no buttons need to be clicked show filter label we're going to say yes we want to put that inside there because then it makes a little bit more sense to the end user so with that being done we can now go ahead and configure things so let's just hop over to our style setup we're going to set things inside here so our positions we're going to set the select width to be 400 pixels that's perfectly fine we can go through and select all the different parameters inside here so you can figure configure this however you want to labels for example let's just make those a little bit dark actually let's leave those for a moment because we're going to style the entire thing first of all anyway so let's just hop into the grouped filters option and in there we're going to set this to be in a line and you can see that now sets those out to be in a line i'm going to set these to be 300 pixels let's just adjust that again so there we go so we're just basically setting these on screen there we go about 410 will do us perfectly fine and then we can adjust things like the horizontal space those kinds of cool things in vertical space so that's that side of things all done so before we move on to adding the extra filters in let's just make this look a little bit neater and tidier so let's select the entire section we're going to come up to advanced and we're going to just add in something like 50 pixels of margin that uh, padding sorry let's set a background color on there just to make it look a little bit cooler so we'll set a background color and we'll go for something like let's go for our blue black that's cool i like that we're going to put a border around this and we're going to just say we want a solid border we're going to set our border to be white no border radius or anything that looks pretty cool and let's just close this down a little bit so we can see what we're working with and now we're going to push that up so it kind of sits over our header section so let's just do that by using some negative margins we'll set this let's try about negative one 50 probably a little bit too much let's say 120 because we're going to put some extra filters under here anyway so now we can just go ahead and quickly adjust this so our labels for example they need to be white so let's just change that color on there to be white just the typography to make these just a little bit heavier and we'll adjust the line height to give us a bit of breathing space there we go that looks pretty cool that's good okay so next up let's drop in the next filters we want to apply so let's just come back over the next type of filter is going to be a range filter so we're going to just do a search for range and you can see there's our range filter we'll drag and drop that underneath and what we're going to do now is just choose what filter we want so we're going to just do a search for price there you go there's our property price select filter for jet engine because that's where the data is coming from show filter label so people know what the heck they're actually looking at and then we can go through and start styling things so again like we did before we can just simply come in and set up all our styling for the various different things so point out everything looks 
particularly good on there. We're just going to come into, for example, our values. We need to set those to be white so people can see them as our values. And let's also make those just a little bit heavier. Say about 400. Actually, let's go for 500. There we go. We'll set those to be over to the left hand side. I'm going to go to our label and do the same kind of thing there. So we're going to set this to be white and adjust the font on there to be 500. And we'll adjust the line height to give us a bit of breathing space around there. That looks pretty good. OK, so the next thing we want to do is just drop into advanced and we're going to use our widget stalker again. And we're going to set this to be using units and 33%. So we can now stack three of these next to each other very, very quickly and easily. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add in the next two using exactly the same principle that I've just shown you on this. And then we can test everything out. There we go. Everything is now in place. And I can see that I need to probably push this up just a little bit more. So let's just select this section. Let's come back into our navigation. So let's just open up the navigator and select our section. There we go. Let's just make this about 140. Let's try that. Is that going to work? That looks pretty good. Let's go with that. So we'll update that. So we've now created our filter set on our home page. So let's just test this out to make sure everything is working as we'd expect. OK, so we're on our test site. There's our filter and everything all in place. And as you can see, there's all our six properties. Obviously, we've only got six to test out. So let's just say we want to test things out like with, for example, the property type. We're going to say we're interested in apartments. And you can see that now filters it down to two different apartments. We take a look at the property location. They're only available in New York. Let's try something like house, for example. We can see that we've got two houses. And if we just open the property available, you can see that we've got Los Angeles and Miami. So if we choose Los Angeles, you can see that filters it down to just that property. However, we come back to any, we have those two properties. So now we could say we're in you know, any properties that are sub 1 million. So we can just drop that down to say around there. And as you can see now, we just get the 1 million pound house. We can click and go and take a look at that one and everything else, as we've set up previously, is all in place. So you can see we've got the filter set up. We can fine tune and tweak this, add extra options in there if we want to. But now we want to have that in all the different locations. So we go to all properties, for example, we need to have that filter inside there. So let's just go back over here. We're going to just open up our navigator. We're going to choose our section and we're going to copy that. So now we can come out of this and head back over into our templates. And we can just use that inside our templates. Come back into our theme builder and we're going to come into our property archive, which is, there we go. Where's he gone? Property archive. Let's edit that with Elemental. Once we're inside there, we can just simply drop in that filter. So we'll just say we'll paste that inside there. Let's just come to the bottom, paste that. There's our filter. We can now just position that where we want. That's our filter in place. So we'll just update that and we'll just pop over to our test site refresh that template and there's our filters all set up so again we can just filter this out so this is all our properties we can say we're interested in loft apartments and you see there's our loft apartment so pretty cool everything is all working the way we wanted to so that's how we set up our filters how we can apply them to the various different parts of our site and how we can make a really powerful filter and search setup throughout our entire site for all the data that we're adding in custom and otherwise now, we all want to know if a sales agent is good and having the ability to check out reviews is a great way to implement just that. So let's see how we can use Jet Reviews to do that right now. So the last thing on our list to do is to add the reviews in for the agent so people can see how good they are and apply feedback if they want to. To do that, we're going to be using Jet Reviews. So we're going to come into Jet Reviews and we're going to say we want to add in a new review type. So let's go to Review Types. We're going to add new. And from there, we're just going to call this agent reviews Going to add a field in. And this field is just basically going to be the review field. So we're just going to open this up. We're going to put in the rating. And that's basically it. You can set the kind of rating steps you want. So I'm not going to do one to 100. I'm going to do one to five. So they can have a one to five star rating. And we're going to say add type. And that's really, really simple setup. But that's all we really need for this example. So that's our review type configured. We now need to go and just add that in to, first of all, allow them to be added and also to allow them to actually be viewed. Before we can do that, we need to actually say where this review is going to be associated. In other words, we want it to only apply to the agents and then also who can actually leave reviews. So, for example, we're going to come into the option for settings. And under settings, we're going to come into the post types and you can see we've got posts, pages, landing pages and our custom post types, which is agent and property. 
we're only interested in agent. Everything else is turned off anyway. So we're going to come into agent and we're going to say use the review for this post type. So we want that to happen. Which review type do you want to use? We've just created that review. We're going to open that up and there's our agent reviews. Allowed roles, who can actually leave a review? So we've got this set up for administrators and so on, but we're going to set this to also be allowed for guests. Obviously, you'd put more care into how you'd set this up and who can leave sort of reviews and things like that. But I just want to show you how easy it is to use this. But you can also still put in verification and authentication before any reviews are posted so you avoid any junk and spam. Okay, so review author verification. Just use guest user on this. That means that any guest has to be sort of confirmed first. Comment author verification. So in other words, if you allow comments on there, this also has to be approved by an admin. And then we've got the new re review approval. Absolutely. We don't want anybody to start putting junk on there. And the other options allow comments. If you don't want that, you can just have a review and no comments. It's up to you. And we're going to just check these options and just basically avoid having spam so we have to confirm anything before it goes put onto the site. So with that being done, that's all been set up and configured. We now need to go and do two things. Add the review option to the agents and also put the listing item of the star ratings underneath the agent details. Now all that information is going to be placed into one of the templates we created earlier, which is the default agent single post. So we need to find that. There we go. Default agent single. We'll edit that with Elementor. And that will give us all the information, the bio and all those kinds of details we saw earlier. So the first thing we want to do is to put in the ability to leave a review. So let's just put in a heading first of all. So we'll just drop that underneath the bio. We'll set this to be something like H6. It's not overly important. And we're just going to say agent reviews. And what we're going to do is we just make that a little bit more bold, something like that. And that'll do. That looks pretty good. Okay, so what we can do now is we can just grab the reviews option. So we're going to do a search and we'll search for reviews. And what we're looking for is the reviews listing. So we'll drag that underneath our heading and that will insert the reviews. So we just need to set up some basic information. So the rating layout stars is perfectly fine. The input, we're going to set that to be stars as well. Review rating type is details because we're not going to work on an average and reviews per page. We're going to set that to be five, for example. So now you can come in and you can configure the icons and do what you want inside there. You can do the same thing for labels and you can set your styles for your colors and so on. So I'm going to leave all those as they are for now. Only thing I'm going to do is make sure we select the widget, come into advance, and we're going to put a little bit of space around this and we're going to set a background color just so it makes it look just a little bit separated from the rest of our design. So let's just quickly apply the colors we want to use inside there. Uh, we're just going to adjust the opacity on this. Bear with me. There we go. Let's just adjust that down so it's quite subtle on there. And there we go. We're just going to update that page. So that's inserted the ability now to leave reviews. Next thing we want to do is actually show those reviews in stars. So how do we do that? Well, we need to add the star rating. So let's just do that next. Let's search for star rating. There we go. I'm going to drag that. We're going to put that underneath their details. So we're going to drop that inside there. Now that's not going where I want. So we just pull that down one more section. There we go. Okay. So now we need to just set this up and configure it correctly. So the rating scale zero to five is perfectly fine because we're working zero to five stars. Next up, the rating. Where is that data going to come from? Well, this is something we need to choose. So we're going to use the dynamic tags. And from there, we're going to come down to Jet Reviews, and you can see Average Rating. We're going to select that option, and basically that's all we need to do there. You can change the icons if you want to. You can use stars. You could use buildings. You could do whatever you actually wanted to. You can come into your style settings, and you can just configure things inside this if you want to change colors. So we might say we want this to be in orange, for example. Well, we can do that. And that's basically it. So we update this template and now we can test this out by hopping over and taking a look at the actual page itself. Okay, so we're on to Brittany's page. You can see there's the stars all grayed out because currently there is no rating associated with it and there's our agent reviews. So I'm going to write a review. I'm just going to put in there, wow, awesome. I'll just say Brittany rocks. And I'm going to give it five out of five stars. That's great. I'm going to submit that review. And you see, your review must be approved by a moderator. So we've got that in set up inside there so we don't have to worry about junk and spam. We come back into our dashboard and go and take a look inside our Jet Reviews. We can see inside there we've got one review. And you can see if we go to Agent, there's our one review. And if we go to All Reviews, we'll see there's the review. 
given the rating, who it's for, the date, and you can see it's approve, edit, or delete. Well, we're going to say approve because obviously we want to make sure this is approved. We'll come back over. We'll refresh the page now and we'll see there's my review and you can see Brittany now gets a five star rating. As simple as that. That's all there is to it. But it's a great way of providing impact and information based upon, in this example, an agent. And you can leave comments and all those kinds of things. So pretty cool to see how you can add this in there. Purely optional if you wanted to do it, but I think it's a nice little touch. We've set up a pretty comprehensive listing website and we have one more job to do before wrapping things up. Let's add in the ability to let our site visitors choose the property type they want to view and then have a nice looking template to actually show them the details. So to wrap up, let's just have a look at what we've gone ahead and created because we've covered a heck of a lot in this tutorial. So this is our homepage where we've got our Ajax based search. We've got our full filtering system on there. We've got a custom listing for our properties. We've got all the relevant details we want to display. We can click to come and take a look at the actual property itself and have even more information inside there, including icon lists, all the details you want, the location and so on. We can find out who exactly is actually selling this property. We can also send them a message directly about the property. We can take a look at the agents if you want to. And you can see there's the information about the agents. We can click to go and view the listings, find out their star ratings, their bio, the properties that they're actually selling. And then we can click and go and take a look at the properties themselves. All pretty cool. The final thing I just want to quickly show you is how you can easily go and add in another level of menu structure to allow you to filter through and see only the properties that are based upon that particular property type. For example, condos, flats, those kinds of things. So I'm into the menu structure and the first thing we want to do is create a custom link and this is just going to be the sort of placeholder, the parent for all the different types of properties. So we're going to put the hash symbol in there so it becomes a null link. And we're going to do is we're going to say property type. We'll add that to our menu structure and we'll just take that up and put that above view agents. So now what we can do is we can go into the property types and there's all our property types. We'll select all of those, add those to our menu structure and we'll just indent those underneath property types. So I just quickly do that. And there we go. Save our menu structure. And we'll just hop back over then into our test site, refresh this. And once that's refreshed and finished, let's say that again. Let's just test that out. There we go. There's our property types. And you can see there's apartment, house, loft apartment, and so on. So we go and take a look at apartment. You can see this takes us into a template that isn't the template that we actually want to see. So we just need to quickly create another template now that will list our properties in the right way. So let's just create a new template. So again, this is going to be an archive. So we'll select archive. And what we're going to do is we'll add new. Archive is fine. And we're just going to call this default property type archive. Create our template. And what we'll do then, once we've created our template, is I already copied the header section. So I'm going to just paste that in for speed. So paste that inside there. And obviously, you can add in the filters and those kinds of things and the sorts and those kinds of cool things. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I just want to quickly show you how you can do this. So we're going to do listing. I'm going to drop that inside there. We'll just expand this out. Just give us a little bit of space above and below. Select our listing, and from there, we're going to choose listing, and we're going to do property. There you go. It's our property listing. So all we need to do now is just quickly configure anything else we want on here. So we'll just set this to be lazy load, equal column height, load more, and we're going to say infinite scroll is perfectly fine. But you'll notice that this is still showing all of the properties, which isn't what we want. We want this to just show the property under the specified property type. To do that is really, really easy, but easily overlooked. All you need to do it says use as archive template. Enable that and you can see it kind of takes out the information you expect to see and just kind of pre-fills it out with just some text that's a post. That's perfectly fine. All we need to do is save the condition. So save your template, add a condition in, and we're going to just set this up to be property type underneath property archive. And we're going to set this to be all. So in other words, this is going to be the template that is going to be used just for the property type and it's going to show every one of the property types. That's all you've got to do. Save and close, update or save, whatever you need to do. And then what we can do is we can hop over to the test site and take a look at this in action. So we're onto our homepage and there's our property types. And underneath there, there's our apartment, house, and so on. So let's try loft apartment and we'll go to that. And you can see that's just showing us only the loft apartment. Come back into apartments 
and you can see that now shows us all of the apartments. The same goes if we come in and we choose house. It'll show us all of the houses. And then, like before, we can click and go through and take a look. Now, obviously, there's so much more you can do with this. You can apply a different filter set to this if you wanted to. So you can filter based upon price and those kinds of things, but not the property type, because obviously you're looking at a property section. But I'm not going to just repeat what I've already shown you. You can enable that, set things up yourself. Hopefully, what you can do, though, is you can take all the skills and knowledge you've covered in this video, and you can then start to apply those to flesh this out even further. Okay, it's fair to say this has been a monster of a masterclass, but if you're still hungry for more, well, take a look at the playlist that's on screen right now to dive deeper into what can be done with Jet Engine. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below, and if you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. But if you didn't find value, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. My name's Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.